first upcycle we're going to do is this glass jar and I'm going to paint it with my homemade baking soda paint. If you haven't tried baking soda paint on any glass or ceramic, it works really well. I have a great recipe. I'll put the link down below in the description and you can try it out. I'm just going to put one coat over the whole glass jar and you can see it's kind of got a little bit of a grainy texture. It's not a real smooth texture. One full coat and then I'm going to let it completely dry and then I'm going to put a second coat on and it is a little bit streaky but that's okay. We're going to fix it on our last coat. Um, so I'm just going to put on our second coat right now. The second coat has completely dried and that's key. You have to make sure you're letting your coats of paint dry completely when you're painting glass in between each coat. I'm gonna take a little sponge and I'm gonna sponge on that baking soda paint over that whole glass jar and that's gonna get rid of all of those brush lines. You just wanna dab it up and down over the whole surface. It gives it a little bit of a pebbly texture but I really love this look. This paint texture is quite similar to a chalk paint. It might have a little bit more texture than the chalk paint, but I really like it and it adheres really well to the glass if you're trying to find something that's going to stay put. I've done up two glass jars and now we're ready to put some graphics on them. For the graphics, I'm going to use my homemade decoupage napkins. If you can't find napkins that you want to use to decoupage with, you can make your own and they're so simple. I have a full tutorial on how to do it. I'll put the link down below in the description. But what you're essentially doing is you're making your own napkins that are nice and thin and so easy to decoupage with. I printed off some of these graphics. They're going to be available in my Etsy store if you want to try them out. And I'm going to use the water transfer method to put these on the jars. When you're decoupaging with a napkin using this technique, I like to have a ragged edge around the graphic. You don't want to leave a straight edge because when you put it on, it doesn't blend in very well onto the bottle. I'm just taking a really stiff paintbrush, dipping it in water and going all around the edge of that napkin just to make it nice and ragged. If you want to make your own decoupage napkins, you can use either a laser jet or an inkjet. Both will work fine. If you are using an inkjet, you might have a little bit of difficulty with the ink running, but you can prevent that by spraying your napkin over top of the graphics with a little bit of hairspray before you do this technique and um, put it on your bottle. And we're gonna decoupage this on with my Mod Podge mat. Okay, this napkin is all ready. You wanna turn it upside down and I just have a plastic sleeve that I got at the dollar store. You're gonna take a little rag, just dampen it in water and then drip it over that napkin really careful. You have to be careful because it's gonna be really fragile and it'll tear easy. Just pull out any little wrinkles or bubbles that you might have in it and then you're ready to put it on the jar. Now we're going to take our Mod Podge mat and we're just going to put a light coat over the whole area where that napkin is going to be decoupaged on. You don't want to put it on too thick. If you have it too thick it's going to have a tendency to wrinkle and bubble really easy. So just a light coat. And now we're ready to put that custom made napkin onto that upcycled jar. Put it exactly where you want it and the nice thing about this technique is you can pick it up and kind of move it around a little bit if it's not exactly where you want it and you're going to start from the center and just push all those wrinkles and air bubbles out until you have that napkin secured right to that jar and then you're going to really slowly lift away that plastic sleeve and you have a homemade decoupage napkin onto your baking soda painted upcycled jar and you can see how well it blended right in with that paint it looks fantastic and now I'm just going to do the same process on the second bottle that I painted these are so fun because you can print off your own quotes you can um, print off photos anything personalized when you're making your own decoupage napkins and now we're ready to seal them up and I love using this water-based polyacrylic sealer. It gives it a nice hard finish that's easy to dust down. Here are the two finished jars right out of the recycling bin for free. I added a little bit of twine and some little ornaments to hang from the top 
and I think they are adorable. Next project, we are going to take a pickle jar and we are going to paint it with my homemade chalk paint. This works fantastic to adhere to glass jars. I'm going to put on a really good coat all over the whole glass jar and then I'm going to set it aside. It's key, let it dry completely before we put on the next coat. Putting on that second coat of chalk paint, then I'm going to set it aside, let it dry completely and then we're going to be ready to put on some custom graphics. This jar has two full coats of the chalk paint on it and now we're gonna put on a graphic. I'm using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I've printed this off on my LaserJet printer and you have to make sure if you're using words that you reverse them. If you don't reverse them, when you put them on your project, your words will be backwards. And I am going to use my Mod Podge mat again to apply this onto the jar. You don't want to put too much on. You just need a light coat and put it all over that piece of paper. And then you're going to center it on the glass jar. And then we're going to set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. That's key with this technique is to make sure that you let it dry really, really well. Now this is dried overnight. I'm taking a damp rag with just some water and I'm just dampening it till you can just start to see the graphics show through. And then you're going to just rub away all of that paper. This technique takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it is fantastic. And the projects that you can make is unbelievable. And that's it for this one. We're going to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I saved the top off of this mason jar. I'm going to screw it back into the top, fill it right full of some beautiful greenery, and let's stay home. Next project, we're going to make a plant hanger with one of these thrift store banana hangers. I find them all the time in the thrift store. If you see one, make sure you grab it. I'm giving this a really distressed look with some 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, this is a salsa jar. I'm putting on two full coats of my homemade chalk paint, making sure it's dried completely in between each coat. And then I'm going to do, again, my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. Printed it off on my laser jet printer, sized it, reversed the text, and I'm using my Mod Podge to apply it onto the jar. Put it onto your jar. Make sure you rub out all the bubbles and wrinkles, set it aside, let it dry for 24 hours, and then you're going to dampen it with a rag and then just rub off all of the paper and you're left with a fun graphic. I'm going to embellish this with some twine around the neck of it and then I'm going to make a little hanger so we can hang it from that banana hanger and put a little faux plant in it and it is just adorable. I have this in my kitchen and they, if you are a reseller, these are fantastic to resell. Not a lot of cost involved in it, and it looks like a high-end piece of decor. I'm just putting in a faux succulent that I found at Winners. It fit perfect right in there, and then I'm hanging it on that little piece of twine. And look how cute this is, and it is so easy. It would fit in with a farmhouse theme or a boho theme. Next up cycle, I'm going to do this pickle jar. I had this knob in my stash in my shed using some E6000 and I'm going to glue it on the top of that lid, set it aside, let it dry completely. And then I'm soaking off the label in some hot soapy water, getting it really nice and clean. And then I'm going to paint it with my homemade chalk paint. I'm going to put two full coats on this jar, letting it dry completely in between each coat. And like I said before, I'll have a link to my chalk paint recipe down in the description works fantastic on glass. We're just going to put a real simple graphic on this one, Simply Blessed. And laser jet printer, made sure I'd reverse my text and I'm just going to use my Mod Podge, put just a light coat over the entire graphic and then place it on the jar. This product that I'm using right here is the exact same as Mod Podge. You can find it at Michael's. It's actually a little bit more reasonably priced than the Mod Podge. I pick it up every once in a while little knob has dried on top of the lid. I've taken it outside and I'm going to give it just a really good coat of my black spray paint. And now we're going to decoupage some napkins around that graphic. This is just a napkin I picked up at the dollar store. And when you're doing this, something like a flower, you want to make sure you're tearing it all around before you decoupage it on. If you just leave the straight lines of the napkin and when you put it on the jar, it just doesn't look very nice. We're going to rub off the paper on this graphic first before we decoupage onto the napkins. Just wet it with some um, water and taking my finger and rubbing all of that paper off. And that's all done. Let's get decoupaging.
When you're decoupaging, less is more. You don't need very much product. Just put a real light coat on and then just place your napkin down exactly where you want it. Tap it down with your fingers to get all the bubbles and wrinkles out and just have fun with it. And look how cute this turned out. Just blended in perfectly with that graphic and the lid just finished it off perfectly. Today we're going to do some DIY stained glass or color tint or dye some glass jars and bottles. This is what you're going to need to do the project. I've got some paper towel, some tin foil lined cookie sheet, I've got some skewers that I broke in half so I just need the half of them, some little plastic jars to mix our solution up in, and assorted glass jars and some food coloring. I'm using some gel food coloring. You can also use the liquid also. Um, and this one's nice because it's already in pre-mixed colors. And some Elmer's school glue. I love doing these glass jars in all the different colors. Uh, the first one I'm gonna work on is one of these mason jars. You wanna make sure you have an area where um, you can keep everything kind of neat and clean because it will stain with the food coloring. So I have a piece of tin foil and then I'm just gonna put a piece of uh, paper towel on top of it so when we drain it out, it can catch onto the paper towel and not make a mess. I'm gonna be using the Elmer's School Glue. Now there isn't really an actual measurement to this. You just kind of want to mix up enough that you think is going to be good for your project. Um, and when I'm using the school glue, I don't like to dilute it with any water. I find it sticks to the jar better without it being diluted. If you're using Mod Podge, which also works perfect for this project, you might want to um, kind of water it down a little bit because I do find that it is a little bit thicker and doesn't run as well over the bottle as the Elmer's glue does. So I'm just adding my food coloring until I get the desired color that I want. You want to make sure that you're using quite a bit. You want quite a, di a dark color because as this dries, it's gonna lighten. So by making it darker, you'll know that you're gonna have it the right color when you're finished this project. So I'm gonna add, I think a little bit more and you just kind of do it until you're happy with the color. And all of this food coloring is just in my craft room. I don't use it for my cooking. It was just bought just for crafts. Okay, so this is a really good color, nice dark blue. And now we're ready to put it in the jar. Now, while you're mixing up this color, you can preheat your oven. We're gonna preheat the oven to 175 to 200. So it's nice and hot and ready for when we're finished with these jars so we can bake them. And I'm just gonna dump the mixture right into the glass jar. This is really a simple, easy DIY, and it creates beautiful tinted stained glass, and you can do it in all kinds of different colors for every season, and um, they look perfect in the center of a table. And I'm just gonna get everything in here. And then once you have it all out of this little container, we're gonna swirl it around in the glass jar and make sure it gets completely coated. I've got it swirled around, completely covered on the inside, and now I'm just gonna set it on the paper towel and let it drip down and make sure that it's all completely covered really well. Now I'm gonna do a yellow one in this little jar. So once again, we're just gonna measure out the glue to approximately what you think will cover the glass, add the food coloring and swirl it around. And again, make sure you add lots of color because it's gonna dilute the color as it dries so maybe mix a color that you think you want it and then just add a little touch more and that will probably be the color that you want. This one's gonna be really pretty, this nice and vibrant yellow. Got this all swirled around, we're ready to put it upside down and let it drain off. 
Now, when you're doing these, they're never gonna be perfect. You're always gonna have the odd streak or the odd bubble there. I actually really like that because then it makes it look like it's old and vintage and um, not brand new. And now I'm going to do some green. I'm gonna do a, a, the six different colors so I can show you how they all look when they're finished and um, how vibrant and beautiful they can be even all together. Just gonna add the green food coloring. And I'm not gonna show you my fingers because the, <laughs> I'm already covered in, I probably should have put some gloves on, but that's not the way I roll. I always like to have a big mess, as you know, um, but this will stain. So if you don't wanna get your fingers all different colors, then put some gloves on. So I'm just mixing up this beautiful green color. I want it to be quite a dark, so I'm gonna add bit more and then we're ready to put it in the bottle and swirl it around. And the green one's done and I'm just gonna put it upside down and let it drain also. I love this little bottle with the cork and I think I wanna make it amber. So I'm gonna mix up some brown and make a really pretty amber color for this. Dump in what I think I need for the project. Get a little skewer. Scoop it into the, the glue. And like I said before, if you have some Elmer's glue, you can use that. You can also use the Elmer's glue clear it works really well and you can also use Mod Podge. The, but like I said before, I find the Mod Podge is a little bit thicker so you might want to water it down a little bit with a little tiny bit of water um, when you're doing this technique and I found with this glue you didn't need to. Okay, now I'm going to do pink. The nice thing about this set of all the different gel colors is they're already mixed into specific colors. If you're getting the little food coloring that has just the four different colors, you'll have to mix and match. Get your color chart out to mix the colors that you want. Um, that's what I like about this one. This one's already mixed to pink and you can use it right away. Now the one thing that I will mention with this is this is not permanent. This is just glue and food coloring. So um, you you can't fill the, do this process and then fill it with water and put flowers in it or something like that. It'll just peel right off the jar. This is just for decor purposes only. And um, if you do it and you don't like the way that it turned out, soak it in some really hot soapy water and I'll get a scrub brush and it'll all come back and you can start from scratch again. Now this one, I kind of didn't mix the glue in probably well enough with the food coloring and it's got a little bit of a um, textured color to it. So it might turn out a little bit streaky, but that's okay. I don't mind that look and we're just gonna roll with it. Last bottle, I'm going to do this one and I'm gonna do it in red and uh, I'm gonna mix it all up, swirl it around and then we'll be ready to put these all in the oven and let them bake. should mention before I put these in the oven is these have to be really super clean before you do this. If there's any grease or grime on the inside, the uh, paint and the food coloring will not stick to it and you'll end up having a, blo a blob in your glass where the it hasn't attached. So give it a really good scrub in a soapy sink full of water and um, even an alcohol wipe to wipe out the inside would help too. I've got these all done. My oven's preheated and I'm ready to take it down and put it on the oven. And um, I can't wait to see how these turn out. And wearing gloves would have been a perk also. 
The oven is preheated to 175. I've put them on a tinfoil lined cookie sheet and we're just gonna leave them in there for about five minutes. And then we're going to rotate them over the other side and we're gonna just keep doing that back and forth until they're completely dry. And you'll know they're dry when they're translucent. Now they're all done. It probably took about a half an hour in the oven um, and putting them up and down and reversing them every five minutes to get them dry. They all turned out really well, except for this blue one. And I think I know what happened. It probably had a little bit of residue on the inside and it wasn't sticking. Um, and you can see how it kind of bubbled up and um, it didn't work. And sometimes this can be a little bit of a tricky process. So I just wanted to show you that not all the time does it always work out perfect, but um, I'm going to wash this one out and probably redo the blue over again, but the other ones turned out perfect and I love them. And I'm just gonna show you, you can see how easy it is to redo it. This kind of just peels right out and you can retry it again. So I'm gonna do this one again, but I'm gonna make sure that I really, really clean it really well. I probably didn't use um, enough of an alcohol wipe to get any grease or grime. Maybe it had some sort of a, a greasy food in it before, and that's why it didn't adhere. But I just wanna update you guys on that in case that does happen to you. They're all finished and I love them. And probably the amber is my favorite color. Let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite. I've got three upcycled glass bottles and jars that I've saved and I'm going to show you how I paint them with no chipping, no peeling and it works fantastic. I've scrubbed these all in hot soapy water down in my kitchen sink and now I'm going to wipe them down with the rubbing alcohol. This is so important because a lot of these jars have greasy food or residue on the inside and the outside that will prevent the paint from sticking. Don't skip this step. Now, this is a step that I've just recently added and I find it makes a really big difference. You can just paint chalk paint on your glass jars and it sticks really well. Never had a lot of problems, but if you want it to really, really stick and have absolutely zero problems, I like to use either a flat white spray paint or if you have any spray primer, this works even better. Give it a little tiny spritz. You don't need to cover your whole jar. Just give it a spritz, just enough, just to give it a little bit of a coat. And that's a fantastic base to start your painting. I'm gonna take this out to my shed and give all three of these a little spritz. I've taken this outside and to my shed and you can see I've just given it like a really light spritz. You don't need very much. It doesn't have to be covered completely. Just enough for the paint to adhere to it. We're now ready to start painting. I am just using my homemade white chalk paint. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can make some for yourself. I find it works really well painting glass. I'm just gonna do the bottoms first and then we'll paint the sides. Our bottoms are all dry. Now we're going to use our brush and paint on a good coat on all the bottles. You don't want to put it on too thick. You want a light coat and this little chip brush works fine for this process. First coat is completely on. Huge tip. Do not put your second coat on until these are completely dry really, really dry, that's important. If you try to paint on your second coat before the first coat's completely dry, it's going to lift off. So we're gonna set it aside and let it dry completely. Ready for the second coat. I like to brush on the second coat again. If you found you had really good coverage with the first coat, you can go to the third coat where I like to sponge it on. But um, I'm gonna put a second coat on. I just find it covers better and you can just see how your paint works for you. Our second coat is completely dry and you can tell that it's really adhered to the glass, but when you're using the brush, you can see stroke marks. So our last coat, always like to use a sponge and dab it on. Our coat that we put on with the sponge is all completely dry now and as you can see I'm scrubbing really hard this is not coming off 
it bonds really, really well. That's how easy it is to paint glass and have it look nice and smooth and ready for your DIY project. This is such a fantastic technique because it works on clear glass. A lot of transfer methods don't work well on clear glass and when you try to do it, they rub off. You just don't have really great results. With this method, it works fantastic. For this technique, you're going to need this paper that's shiny underneath. I found these label sheets at the thrift store. They work fantastic. You can also use address label sheets. Take off the stickers. That's what we're going to use. I am now going to go and upload my image that I want to use into Google Docs, size it to fit my project. I have a full tutorial on how to use Google Docs to resize your graphics if you're not sure how to do it. I'll put the link to that video down in the description. Once you have it completely sized, we're gonna load it into our printer, making sure that it's going to print on the shiny side. Now this technique will only work with a laser jet printer. You won't have very good results with an ink jet. I've printed it off, and now we're going to use clear shelf liner that you can pick up at the dollar store. Now we're gonna cut the graphic off that sheet of paper a little bit bigger than the actual size of the graphic and make sure that you're not touching the ink because it will rub off. And then cut a piece of that shelf liner the exact same size as that transfer. I have three projects in this video using this technique and make sure you stick through right to the end because they all turned out absolutely adorable. Peel off that shelf liner and then really carefully Center it over that graphic, making sure not to move it. You only have one chance. Lay it down, flatten out all the bubbles and wrinkles, and then I like to use my Cricut scraper or you can use some sort of a credit card and really press that shelf liner right into that graphic. Once you've really got all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it, you're gonna trim around the edges, and then we're gonna prep our project. I like using some rubbing alcohol. This is just a candle that I found at the thrift store. It hadn't been used yet, so it was brand new, and it's in that clear glass jar. Now comes the magic. You've peeled that shelf liner off that piece of paper. The graphic stays on it, and you have created a transfer that you can put on any clear glass projects. And isn't this absolutely fantastic and you can just imagine the possibilities you can custom make these I was thinking as I was making them how beautiful they would be for a wedding or baby showers or customized gifts for the holidays okay for this transfer I am going to do it on a wine bottle that I got out of my recycling bin same process as last time we're gonna measure it to make sure that it's gonna fit our project and then print it off on that paper on the shiny side now this will also work on the sheets that the vinyl comes on from your Cricut machines. So if you have some of that paper, cut it down to the size of a sheet of paper that will fit in your printer and you can print on it and it'll work the exact same as this type of paper. All the graphics that I'm using in today's video are available in my Etsy store. If you wanna go over and have a look, I'll put the link down below in the description. I have all kinds of printable, downloadable graphics there for all of your crafting DIYs. It takes some hard pressure scraping that transfer onto that piece of shelf liner and you can always lift it up a little bit and make sure that it's transferred and then push it back down and redo it if it's not transferred completely. But isn't this just like magic? We've created a transfer that we can put on clear glass and you can see it really well and I think it's such a fantastic technique. And this one's all finished and I think it would look beautiful if you filled it up with some rice or some beans or some popcorn and you could put it on a shelf in your kitchen. Or you could even fill it up with some twinkly lights and that would look really pretty also. We cook with a lot of olive oil so when I found this glass bottle full of olive oil at the grocery store I knew I had to buy it. I soaked the label off and then scrubbed it really well with some hot soapy water dried it and now I want to paint the inside of this glass jar just for a different look to show you how it's going to turn out. I've just squirted acrylic paint into this bottle. I'm swirling it around until it's completely covered. You can also add some polyacrylic sealer into the acrylic paint if you want, if you want it to be really durable and stay put. For this project, I'm just using my acrylic paint, swirling it around until that bottle's completely finished printed off my graphic on a piece of that label paper, 
putting on my clear shelf liner, scraping it really well, making sure that that ink is transferring onto the shelf liner and then putting it on my bottle. if you're anything like me you can just imagine all the ideas that are swirling around in my head that you can do with this graphic transfer method today i'm going to show you how i tint some of my glass pieces i want to make these into some fall decor and i you can tint glass and i've seen it done where you do the inside of jars um, and you'll swirl the glue and the dye on the inside and it creates really beautiful tinted glass. But with these candle holders, you can't get into the middle. These are from the dollar store um, and I wanted to make them a nice amber color. So I'm gonna show you today how I do it. It's really simple and really easy and this is what you're going to need to do the project. Um, I always like to put some gloves on because we're gonna be working with some food coloring and it will really stain your hands. A couple little dishes to mix up the um, this and some Elmer's school glue. And you're just gonna need a paintbrush to um, paint it onto your surfaces. So we're gonna get started. This is just a, a package of food coloring that I bought on Amazon and it has all the different colors into it and it was really affordable. So that's what I've picked up um, and it just comes in the little containers and you can mix up get your color chart out and you can mix up any color that you want with what they have here so um that's what i'm going to use and i'm going to use the washable school glue from elmer's um you could also if you have the clear that might work better actually because we want this to dry clear but this one does too and um it works perfect this one came with a brown already, so I don't have to mix it. And I'm just gonna do um, the school glue into the little dish. You just wanna mix enough that you're gonna use for your project, probably about a tablespoon. And then I have a little skewer and I'm just gonna scoop out some of this food coloring and add it to that glue until I get the color that I want. And as you can see, it's already mixing up into a really great color. That amber, amber color. So just mix it up really well. And then we're going to add it onto our project. I got it all mixed up and now we're just ready to paint it onto this glass candlestick. Now I've made sure I've wiped this down really well and then I took an alcohol pad and made sure there's no grease or grime on it. So this will um, stick to it really well and I'm just going to paint it on. Now this has completely dried and I really love the color of it, but I think I want it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna put another coat on it. And with this second coat, I am going to use a sponge. And I think it might get rid of some of those um, brush lines from the brush and I can put it on a little bit thicker too and it'll stay in, in place. So just doing the second coat with the sponge. Now I have the second coat completely finished and using that sponge on the second coat covered it a lot better because I could get into all those little nooks and grooves and um, get it all covered really well. So now we're just gonna set it aside and let it dry. 
Now I'm just starting this second one to match this one and I've run out. So I'm just gonna make a little bit more just to finish up this project. So again, you're just using your school glue and then adding a little bit of the brown food coloring. And then I didn't mix up quite enough in the first batch. So I should be able to get the same color again, pretty close to what I had. So it'll all match really well. Uh, and then I'm ready to sponge on some more. Now I found the first coat that I did with the, the brush, I had a lot of brush streaks. So I'm finding that I'm really liking the sponge to use it. It gives a really kind of textured uh, look to it that I, I really like. So probably when I do my next project, I would just eliminate using the brush completely and just start you with a sponge right from the start. So I'm just gonna sponge on the second coat onto this one and then let them all dry up. I've got them all done and they're dry and I love them. And they look like they're old and vintage and by sponging it on, it gave it kind of a little bit of a textured look and I'm ready to seal them up. And now I'm ready to start the second project. I'm going to use this mayonnaise jar. I love the shape of it. It has a really nice curve to it and another one of the dollar store candle holders. And I'm going to do this one in a orange, which I think will look really pretty and put it all together. So let's get started. I'm going to pour in the school glue enough to do the whole project. Kind of just eyeball it. There's not really any real measurements for this. You kind of just add until you like the color and pour enough glue in to do your whole project. So I'm just gonna stir in the orange food coloring and it turns into a really nice vibrant orange. I think I wanna add a little bit more. And it looks great. And we're ready to put it on our project. And I'm gonna start off with this one um, using the sponge right from the very beginning because I like the look of that. Now I'm using the gel food coloring. I'll put a link down below in the description for what I bought because it does work perfect. But you can also use the liquid that comes in the little droppers and it works fine too. I like this one because it's already pre-mixed into a bunch of colors where if you're buying the drops that is like the four pack, then you have to mix your colors together to get the desired color that you want. So I'm just gonna start sponging on the candlestick first. First coat's all done and I love it. And all ready to put a second coat on and the candlestick. These are all dry and I'm ready to seal with some polyacrylic sealer and Look at the texture and the color on these. It's, I just love it, it's fantastic. And the nice thing about this is you could soak this in hot soapy water after the season's done for the fall and redo them over for Christmas because this is just glue and food coloring and even putting the polyacrylic on top, it will still soak right off. Now I want to glue these two pieces together like this. So I'm going to use my E6000. It sticks just about everything and I'm just going to put it on the lip of this candlestick and then center that jar on top of it. And then I'm going to let it sit until tomorrow and then I'll uh, show you how it turned out. I took the lid outside and spray painted it with some black spray paint. I found this little top off of a spindle and I think I'm going to use it to put on the top of that mason jar lid and I'm going to paint it with some green acrylic paint to make it look like a pumpkin stem. 
I got the spindle all finished and I made it nice and rustic and chippy and I'm going to use some E6000 to glue it on top of the lid. I wanted to make some custom candles to go into these. I've done my homemade graphics on napkins. It's really easy. I have a tutorial. I'll put a link down below in the description if you ever want to make your own custom napkins to, to um, make for your candles. And I'm just going to put it on the candle just like this and it'll look really nice displayed in it. So I'm going to work away at that. This is such an easy DIY to tint glass with your Elmer school glue and a little bit of food coloring dye. You can also substitute the school glue for Mod Podge and that also works really well too. But I love the way these turned out. I love the orange textured on this upcycled glass mayonnaise jar and the dollar store candlesticks. Perfect addition to my Halloween and fall decor. I'm gonna do this crackle glass technique on these glass jars that I've pulled out of my recycling bin. You're gonna need some crayons and you're going to need the white crayon for the first project. You wanna make sure your glass is nice and clean. Wipe it down with an alcohol pad and then just start drawing all over your glass jar. Lines in different ways and up and down and sideways all over the whole jar and you can do the bottom too. Make sure you're putting enough pressure on the crayon that you're leaving an imprint on that glass. And to get a proper crackled glass look, you wanna make sure you're using the white crayon for this project. I've got it completely covered. Now we're gonna get our polyacrylic sealer water-based. I have a little glass dish and I'm just gonna pour a little bit, you don't need very much, into the glass dish. And then we're going to use some really fine silver sparkle. You don't want a sparkle that's gonna be a bigger chunk, you want a really fine, almost dust silver sparkle. And we're gonna incorporate that into the polyacrylic sealer. I'm just gonna use my paintbrush and mix it up really well. No set amount, just until you think that it will look good and sparkle nice on your glass. And then you're just gonna take that polyacrylic sealer with the sparkle and just cover that whole glass jar, the top and the bottom. I let the first coat of the polyacrylic sealer completely dry. And now I'm going back in with that crayon again and remarking on top of that polyacrylic all over in that crisscross pattern, up and down and across. No real set way, just go over the whole thing with the crayon. And then we're going to go on top with another layer of that same polyacrylic sealer with the sparkle in it. It's really important that you let it dry really well in between coats or you're gonna have things kind of move around underneath. I set mine out in the sun and it dried really quickly. After I've got that second coat on and before it dries, I like to take my paintbrush and just dab it. It gives it a little bit of a stippled effect and it helps pop that crackled glass look when it's all dry. Okay, so we're getting there. It's now completely dried again. We're gonna go back one more time again with that crayon. Crisscross everywhere, marking it up and down. I'm trying to create a really fine crackled glass look. I'd like to do two or three layers of this crackle technique. I just think it makes it look more authentic and more like crackle glass. And we're going to apply our last coat of that polyacrylic sealer with the sparkle in it. Same thing, we're gonna tap it on and just kind of tap it up and down, give it that stippled effect, put it outside in the sun and let it dry completely. It's now completely dried. I am going to take this outside and I'm gonna give it its final coat and I'm going to use my engine enamel. This is gonna put a really heavy duty coat on the outside of it so it can be dusted. It's not gonna be waterproof, but it's gonna be water resistant so you can wipe it down with a damp rag if you need to when you wanna clean it. Putting a liberal coat on, we're gonna set it aside and let it dry completely. I'm gonna do a second one, but we're gonna use 
pink this time, the pink crayon, and same method. We're going to crisscross over that whole entire glass jar. You can see how you can get really creative with this technique and you can do it for all the different seasons. I was thinking how cool this would be to do one for Halloween and do it in black with a black crayon and black sparkle. I think that would look fantastic. So I have this completely covered all over with the crayon. Same thing, we're gonna pour in a little bit of that polyacrylic sealer and I have some pink sparkle. Just gonna add it into it, stir it up with my paintbrush to incorporate it really well. And I wanted to do a little bit of a twist with this one. I'm gonna get my gel food coloring. I bought this pack of all these different colors. I'm just gonna add a little tiny dab of it into that polyacrylic sealer. It's just gonna tint everything to have a little bit more of a pink color. And I think it'll look really beautiful when we paint it on top of that jar. If you don't have any food coloring, you can always add just a little dab of acrylic paint also. First coat, we're gonna paint over the entire glass jar, over all of that crayon, and do the sides and the bottom. And make sure you're saving all of your glass jars out of the recycling bin, because this is just one of many DIYs that you can do with glass jars. Let it dry completely. We're going back in with the crayon again, marking every which way, up and down and sideways. And then we're going to do another coat of the polyacrylic sealer again. And here are our finished glass crackled jars. I think it actually looks really authentic, especially the white one. The pink doesn't show maybe quite as much, but it still would be fun to do in all kinds of festive colors. But the white is gorgeous. And how easy of a DIY is this with all you need is a little bit of glitter, polyacrylic sealer, and a crayon. I just hot glued some twine on the top of this one and I had a piece of lace that I put on the white crackled glass and this is what they look like at night. Aren't they beautiful? And they just sparkle so nice with a little candle in them. So give this technique a try and let me know down in the comments how you make out with it. I have an abundance of glass jars from the recycling bin. I can't throw these out. Um, I use them for storage, I craft with them, and then I get too many, so I'm at the too many stage. Any glass jar, I save the lids and the glass jars because I have a full video on um, glass jar lid upcycles. There's some really great ideas in that, so never get rid of these. I'm gonna use this one for this upcycle. Glass jar, you wanna make sure that you scrub it really well. So water, and I sometimes will even take an alcohol pad and really clean it up with alcohol, especially if it's had something oily in it. If you have any of that oil on the outside of your glass jar, uh, your paint is not gonna stick. I'm telling you, it'll peel off. So a lot of times you can paint glass just with chalk paint and it adheres pretty well. I've never really had a lot of issues if I have, if I'm using my homemade chalk paint, I can get it stick to stick to glass pretty good. But I've added another step because with this first step, it does not chip or peel at all. So especially if you're going to be selling your items, I would recommend doing this step because um, you don't want your customer to take their glass jar home and then six months from now their paint's all, cheer, uh, all peeling up. So what I do with my glass jars, clean it really well and then 
I give it a light coat of spray paint. If you can get a spray paint that has a little bit of primer in it too, like a paint and primer spray paint, that's even, that's fantastic. So I have taken this glass jar outside and I have given it a light coat of black spray paint and let it completely dry. And now I'm going to put my chalk paint on top of it. So that's uh, the main step that you wanna do if you want your paint to stay on your glass. I've got some black chalk paint that I just put in a little container here. And I like, for this technique anyways, because it's gonna be kind of primitive. We're, we're, what we're aiming for, if you're just joining, we're making a jar like this. It's got that really textured um, appearance and putting on a graphic kind of primitive style. So I like to sponge my paint on. It just gives it, you can see, it kind of gives it that extra little texture and graininess. And you can also with this project, paint right up to the rim if you want to use your jar afterwards. You don't want to have a bunch of paint up here because when you're taking the lid off and on, it's just going to peel off. So I'm going to leave my top of my jar just clear glass and then paint the rest. So I just like putting, dabbing up and down and uh, giving it a really nice coat. And like I said before, if you put that spray paint primer underneath this, it's not going anywhere. It's not budging. You will get the best results painting glass with chalk paint. It works okay with acrylic paint, but it's not that great. It will still kind of peel and chip off. And latex paint will just peel right off. So you need to take your latex paint or your latex paint, mix it into some chalk paint, and then you're gonna have successful glass jars that are painted. So that's how I like to paint my glass jars. This has got one coat. I will set this aside, I'll let it dry, and then I'll put a second coat on. So I have a jar that's all finished. So I'll just show you. So this is my jar all finished with two coats. And you can see it's just kind of got a little bit of a stipple effect to it from that second uh, second coat of chalk paint. Okay, so what we're ready to do next is put our graphic on. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. I designed this graphic. It is available in my Etsy store. If none of you have ever um, headed over to my Etsy store, it's right full of downloadable printable graphics. You can purchase them in my Etsy store. And if you're a member of my channel, when you join my channel, you're gonna get a 50% off discount code. So if you think you're gonna be using a lot of these, sign up and it, I think it's $1.99 and you'll get the discount code and you can use it as many times as you want, buy as many graphics as you want and you can save a little bit of money. I have coffee stained a piece of paper. I just actually do a quick coffee stain. I have some instant coffee and warm water in a little squirt bottle right here and I just squirt my paper and then dry it with my heat gun and I can when I'm squirting it I kind of hold it up like this and this and then you'll get these lines where it looks really nice and aged dry it with the heat gun then I put it through my printer and I used my laser jet printer you can use your inkjet printer if that's all that you have you just have to do an extra step because when you introduce when you're using your inkjet printer and you introduce water into your ink, a lot of inkjet printers, your graphic will smear. So you need to seal it up a little bit. So if you've taken this graphic and you've printed it on your inkjet printer, get some hairspray. Spray your image with two coats of extra firm hairspray, let it dry completely, and then you're gonna be ready to craft with it and your ink is not gonna run. I don't have that issue with this because this was printed on my laser jet printer and the ink is not going to run. So we're good to go. I want to cut this down to size to fit my jar. I just have a metal ruler here and I'm just gonna rip it because I want the edges to kind of be ragged, a little bit ragged. See how it just kind of gives a nice ragged edge. I printed off two because I got two jars on the go here. I'm gonna just rip this. And I don't, I save every bit of, piece of paper. This will go in my little container and I'll either make it into homemade paper, I'll make it into tags. 
lots of things. Okay, and we're just gonna take this one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're doing a primitive jar, so it's going to be kind of rustic. I have this now ripped out. It is going to fit on our jar. Looks great. I wanna put a little bit of ink around the um, edges just to kinda of get rid of that freshly ripped paper. So I'm just going around the edges. And like I said, this primitive style, it's not for everybody, but you can take these techniques Put your own spin on it and uh, give it your own style. Okay, I like the look of that better. This is what I like to do with this step. I don't like to put it on my jar yet. I like to, this is just matte Mod Podge. And I just like to put a light coat over the top of my graphic. I'm just putting a light coat on just to kind of seal it up and give it a little bit of a matte look. Keep all those ragged edges. And we're just gonna dry this. Join now we're ready to put it on our jar. Okay, we're gonna put some Mod Podge on the back of this. And like I said, if you only have an ink gem, or um, an inkjet printer, don't panic. Do that extra step of putting a little bit of hairspray on your graphic before you do these steps so you can prevent your ink from running. If you are crafting a lot, I would recommend a laser jet printer. They have actually come down in price a lot in the last couple years. So I've actually seen them around the same price as, um, inkjet printers, so price them out. Look at that. Oh, I love these. I just love the way they, the primitive feel that they have. What we're going to do now, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to that B, and we can paint on top of that. Just gonna give it a little pop of color. So I've just got some yellow acrylic paint and just a little fine paintbrush. And I almost wanna use it almost kind of want to dry brush this on here just to give it a little pop of color when I'm doing this and then just kind of dab my finger in it so it looks like it blends in a bit go down here yeah I like this I like this with a little bit of yellow um just wherever there was those little patches on the B it just kind of it's a nice way of adding a little bit of color to your signs or your projects. You can just kind of put your acrylic paint on top because when you're all finished, you're going to seal, seal it all up anyway, so it's going to stay in there. Okay, now comes the messy part to get this texture. This is like a primitive, grungy texture. We're going to get our paper back and Mod Podge. Okay, so I am putting Mod Podge right up to that label. You don't want it too thick, but a good coat on here up to the rim. Like I said, I'm gonna put the lid on this one. So I'm this one um, is probably gonna have the lid stay on it permanently because I've painted right up to the top. And just putting a light coat of Mod Podge over that whole jar, we kind of cut work a little bit quick because we don't want that Mod Podge to dry. Okay, I think I got a pretty good coat on this. So what we're gonna do next is dirt. So this is from my garden earlier in the fall. I saved it and brought it in here. So it's kind of a mixture of dirt, sand, whatever was in my garden, it works. And I'm just putting it right into that Mod Podge, just sprinkling it on. You can see, see what I mean? It's messy, but it's so worth it. And you can that's why I said you kind of got to work fast because you um, want that dirt to stick into your Mod Podge. Sprinkle it all on. Oh, I got a twig here. Okay, I think I got it pretty covered pretty good. Get it around all of the corners. So you can see how this transforms it 
right away into something really primitive. I'm gonna take my heat gun on low, get this dry, and uh, get that dirt adhered to that jar. This will also work with cinnamon, and it is a beautiful color, beautiful uh, textures, and it smells really nice too. So uh, an alternative method to the dirt could be cinnamon. I'm just going to brush away any of that extra dirt. And you can always layer up on this too. If you want a really grubby texture, you can always go back, put on some more Mod Podge, sprinkle in some more dirt, and uh, that looks great too. We're gonna seal this all up. Now this is some of my homemade Mod Podge. This works fantastic if you are not going to do a transfer. If you're gonna do a graphic transfer, the homemade Mod Podge does not work. You have to stick with the store-bought Mod Podge. But if you're just gonna decoupage or do a project like this, the homemade Mod Podge works great. You can see this is where these lids come in handy. I'm gonna pour some of this Mod because I don't wanna get this all dirty and I'm gonna sponge it on. So I'm just dipping in that and we're gonna seal in all of that dirt with the homemade Mod Podge. I like to sponge it on. It gives that texture. It gives that kind of st uh, stippled look. And then when this dries, it's sealing in that dirt onto the glass jar. I need a bit more. Now we already have the Mod Podge on this, but I'm still gonna go over it again because remember we put that little bit of yellow paint on there, so I wanna seal that up too. And go around the edge here. These are, um, I mean, there's so many possibilities. You could do uh, four or five of these and put them on a shelf in a kitchen potting shed. You can keep your seeds in all these glass jars with nice vintage seed labels. I don't know, they're Halloween, Christmas, Easter. There's just so many possibilities. I don't know why you would ever throw out a glass jar, but that's just me. Okay, that looks like that's sealed in pretty good. I'm not worrying about the bottom too much because we didn't put any dirt on that and that's got the um, spray paint on the bottom so it's sealed up well. Let's go in with our heat gun again. How about coffee grinds? Hey, that's a great idea too. Coffee grinds would work. Um, you just kind of have to think outside of the box. I'm sure there's all kinds of herbs that you could crush and uh, sprinkle on. There's so, all, there's something in your kitchen or your craft room that you can use to create texture. You're not limited to just the dirt. Cinnamon, um, what else is there that would be a darker color that you could use? It looks like an alternative to a spray on stone paint. Exactly, and I don't know if you guys have ever priced that spray on stone. It is expensive, really expensive. So you can get really good texture, and I think this looks nicer actually, and um, with just this technique. This is still a little bit damp, but you get the picture. You can see uh, what it looks like. Here's our lid. Now I kind of spray painted this a little bit. Probably the red, but actually the red doesn't look too, too bad on it. I kind of like that actually. You can upcycle this into this, or into this, and this was just going in the garbage. We're going to make a gift tag. I spray painted this with some primer and then I put two coats of my homemade white chalk paint on and I drilled a hole in the top and we're going to add a hanger and put a piece of cardboard in the middle. I've cut a piece of scrapbooking paper down to the size of a paper so I can print on this and then 
put it into my gift tag. So I'm gonna put this into my printer. I've designed a happy birthday graphic and I'm gonna print it off. I got it printed, all cut out. We're gonna Mod Podge it onto that little circle of cardboard. Got it all set inside and I put two coats of Mod Podge on top of it just to seal it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna use my twine and put a nice border around it. And there you have a way to customize gift tags. You can print off anything that you want on the piece of scrap paper, free lid off of a glass jar. So much fun. Next up cycle, we are going to make a magnet. Now a little trick to painting lids. If you put some paper on your jar, screw the lid on, you can spray paint your lid and it makes it a lot easier than trying to hang onto it and spray paint it or setting on something. You can hang onto the bottom of the jar, spray paint it. When it's all dry, you can unscrew it off and you're ready to use it. So I'm gonna take this out and give it a spray. When I'm painting my lids, I always like to use a primer. It's really difficult if you're painting these with acrylic paint or latex paint and you don't prime it first, the paint will peel off. Putting the primer on makes it stick a lot better. So all of these projects, I'm going to put a coat of primer on and then we can paint with latex or acrylic on top of that and it'll stick really well. The primer has all dried on this lid. I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna cut a circle out to go in the middle of the lid and I'm gonna cut on the inside of it so it'll fit inside. I'm gonna hot glue that circle of cardboard into the lid. I want to print a little quote on a circle to put inside of our magnet. So I've got a piece of scrapbook paper. I'm going to cut it to the size of a piece of computer paper so we can put it through our printer and print a quote on the paper. I've printed off the quote on a piece of paper. It turned out perfect. Now I'm going to use my lid as a guide, cut the circle out to put on the inside. I've got my quote all cut to fit in there perfect. I'm gonna use some of my Mod Podge and we're gonna decoupage that onto that piece of cardboard. You can do this with photos, with quotes, with anything, so many possibilities and it makes a really cute little magnet for your fridge or your kitchen or anything metal that you wanna stick it on. We're just gonna press it right in there so it lays nice and then we're gonna let it dry. Now while that's drying, I wanna make a nice fancy edge for this. So I'm gonna measure out what I need to go around the lid. And then I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer and we're gonna make a fringe for this. I always have lots of twine on hand. I'm gonna cut a whole bunch of pieces about that long. And that's what we're gonna make our fringe out of. Now we're just gonna fold these pieces of twine in half, add them to this other piece of twine that wrapped around the lid and just do a lark's head knot like this. And we're gonna add it until it's the length of the lid. love making these fringes. It takes your projects to the next level. We're just going to put that lid in there and I'm going to hot glue it all around the lid and then fluff it up nice. I'm now just going to hot glue a strip of magnet on the back. And it's ready to display. I think this turned out so cute. It's hard to believe that it originally started off as a lid from a salsa jar and the fringe completed it. The primer has all dried on this lid. I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna cut a circle out to go in the middle of the lid and I'm gonna cut on the inside of it so it'll fit inside. I'm gonna hot glue that circle of cardboard into the lid. Now I've just got some jute twine and I'm just gonna 
start a circle and fill in this whole lid. And the twine is all filled in the bottom of the lid. I'm now gonna paint this with some of my homemade white chalk paint. This took two coats of my chalk paint and now I'm gonna put some graphics on it. I have a whole set of eight graphics that is fantastic for these coasters. They're in my Etsy store if you wanna grab them and you can make some of these yourself, save your, your little lids. And I'm going to put this graphic on this with my Mod Podge mat. Our graphic on the coaster has completely dry. I'm just gonna take a damp rag with a little bit of water and we're gonna rub off that graphic. Whenever I'm doing coasters, I wanna make sure they're sealed really well. You're gonna be putting a hot cup of coffee on this or something cold that's gonna condensate. So I always like to use this engine enamel. It gives it a really hard coat, heat resistant, waterproofs it, and it's fantastic. You can find it on Amazon. I'll see if I can find the link to put, um, put it below in my description. And how's that for a coffee lid? We've got the twine underneath so it won't scratch your surface and you can set your coffee on it. Perfect. For this lid, I primed it and then I had these wooden cutouts that I got at the dollar store. I just put them around the outside edge and now I'm gonna paint this. I have a really pretty terracotta color. I'm gonna paint the whole thing. We're gonna turn it into a candle holder. up a little bit of sand paint. I love the texture that it gives and I'm going to paint that on the circles. I've got a tin can. I'm just going to set that in there and paint the circles with the sand paint. And I'll show you the texture that it creates. It's fantastic and it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a elegant look than just the flat paint. And I think this turned out really cute. But that sand paint kind of took it to the next level. Perfect candle holder. Another thing that I love to make with lids are garden labels. You can pick these up at the dollar store, $1.25. There's 10 of them in there. And I like to put a label in the middle of these and then display them out in the garden. So I'm gonna put one together. This has already got a coat of the primer and I'm gonna paint it white. We're ready to put our garden marker together. I have a whole sheet of vegetables and herbs that is available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab them. You can make all kinds of these for your garden. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 and you get 50% off all my graphics in my store and get creating with them. I've printed off beans. I'm gonna do my Mod Podge reverse graphics and put it on the inside of this lid. We're all ready to put our garden marker together. This is sat overnight. I'm just gonna dampen it with a little bit of water and rub off the paper. All the paper is rubbed off. I'm gonna take this outside. We're gonna seal it with that engine enamel because it's gonna be out in our garden. We wanna make sure that it's um, sealed really well. Take it outside, gonna give it a good spray. The engine enamel's all dry. I'm just gonna put some hot glue on the back and glue it to the wooden stick. My garden is still all frozen but I'm gonna be making all kinds of these to have ready when my garden is ready to be planted. When I tell you that I save all of my lids, I save all of my lids. This one's really fun. I can't wait to put this all together because it's gonna be adorable. I've painted all of these lids with some primer, spray primer, and then I've painted them all different colors with some of my acrylic paint that I had and drilled a hole in the top of all of them. And then this is just a tin can that I had. I drilled a hole in the top and holes all around the sides. And 
primed it and then painted it with some of my homemade white chalk paint. We're gonna put a fun graphic on it. Be grateful, slow down, enjoy life. We're gonna use this one that's reversed with the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. And I'm gonna make a wind chime. I've printed off the graphic on my laser jet printer on just regular computer paper and I'm using my Mod Podge mat. And we're going to put it on the jar, let it sit and dry and then rub off the paper and we'll have a graphic on our wind chime. While we're waiting for my graphic to dry, I'm gonna put a hanger on the top. I'm just taking some twine, pulling it right through, and then I'm gonna tie a knot, probably a couple knots actually, to keep that twine in the jar. Pull it through, and then decide how long you want it to hang down. And then I'm just going to tie a loop in the top so we have a loop to hang it from. Trim off the extra. Then we've got a hanger. I've got some of my thinner twine. I'm going to put this through the hole in each of these little lids, tie a knot so it'll stay on. And then I'm gonna do them all different random lengths. So when they're hanging from our wind chime, they all hang at different uh, spots on the wind chime. I've tied on all my lids and now I'm just going to wet the paper and rub it off so we're left with graphics. I distressed the lids a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper. I think it just kind of gave them that really nice rustic look. The colors are all fantastic. I love how colorful it is. My graphics all done. I distressed the tin can some too. I'm gonna take some jute and put some jute on the top and the bottom with the hot glue and it'll be finished. all done and I thought it was going to be easier to put it all together and then give it a really good coat of this en engine enamel to seal it up really well. I'm not going to have this right out in the elements but I'm going to hang it up underneath a porch so it's not going to get wet or snow or anything at all all the time but I do want to seal it really well. I'm going to hang it up and give this a really good spray and it'll be all finished. This might be one of my favorite upcycles that I've done in a while. I love it. I love the little colorful, whimsical look of it. So easy to put together. And I love using up free stuff from the recycling bin. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is fill up your sink with the hottest water that you can get out of your tap. And then I like to use the Dawn dish soap. It seems to cut through the grease and the grime better than any other dish soap. And then I like to add about a quarter cup of white vinegar right into the water. Okay, now we're ready to fill the sink up with bottles. What I like to do is I like to take the hot, hot water out of the tap and fill up the bottles before I put it in the soapy water. It helps uh, loosen up the adhesive from the inside out to get those labels off. Another tip is I fill up my kettle and I boil the water and then I pour it right into the sink because the water coming out of your tap isn't that hot as a boiling kettle full of water. So I put a full kettle right into my sink and then I let everything sit and soak. Now we're gonna let everything soak for about 15 minutes. Now we're waiting for everything to soak. I'm gonna show you, these labels are really hard to soak off in water. They're like a uh, plastic label. So I'm gonna use my heat gun and I find that helps take these off pretty good. And you're just gonna take your heat gun on high setting and just 
be really careful because it's really hot and the plastic will melt a little bit. You don't want to burn yourself, but just be really careful and just slowly go up and down the whole label until you can kind of feel when it's starting to lift away from the jar. Don't grab it with your fingers when it's hot. Use a scraper or you will burn yourself. Okay, it's cooled down a little bit and you can peel that label right off. But as you can see, there's a little bit of sticky residue still left on the jar. I'll show you how to get that off in a minute. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and as you can see, some of the labels have actually just lifted completely off. And I know some girls, if the labels come off in one piece, they like to save them. They'll dry them out and they'll use them on other crafting projects. And this one you can see the label came right off but it did leave some residue right on so we're gonna have to use another technique to get that off what i like to do is i like just to grab one of my butter knives and use the smooth end of it and just scrape it and most of the stuff will probably just scrape right away I'm just gonna empty out the water out of it and I'll show you how well just scraping it with the knife takes that adhesive right off of it. And there you can see how it's nice and clean. I'm gonna save the rest of it on that bottle um, to show you other techniques that we can, we can try. And this one here, it didn't really soak off, but the top part of the label uh, is quite loose. So I'm just gonna take my knife again and use the dull side and just scrape it away and you can see that it comes off the paper label comes off quite easily it is leaving some adhesive on the bottle though so once we get all the paper off of that I'll show you a technique to get all of that adhesive off and you can see the sticky residue that's left on there and the gin bottle and that label is actually going to peel off quite easy and then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to scrape off the back of that label too. And as um, I'm scraping away on this, it's actually not leaving any adhesive so it's coming really clean just with soaking it and just taking a knife and scraping off the paper crown royal bottle the label just comes right off no problem and there's no sticky residue underneath so I'm just gonna give it a nice little wipe with the cloth and it's gonna come off nice and clean now let's see how this little barbecue sauce bottle turned out I love this little bottle actually it's a really cute bottle and I have a great up idea on how to upcycle this and I think that's going to be my next video so stay tuned for that and this little bottle is going to come nice and clean just with a little bit of scraping. Okay, there is a little bit of adhesive stuck on this blue bottle in the one corner. And I'm going to try, I've never tried this technique before, but I've seen some girls that have used it and it's olive oil. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil where the sticky residue is and then rub it in. And it actually is working. It is taking some of that adhesive off. I'm just gonna take my little knife here and scrape out a little bit. And it actually works pretty good. If you guys have any techniques that you've tried and work really well that you don't see that I've used in the video, I'd love to hear about them. So leave a comment down in the description and uh, let me know. Now here is my favorite method. This works almost 90% of the time, 90, probably 95% of the time. And it's just an SOS pad. And you just wet it a little bit with the water and scrub on that adhesive and it just comes right off. Now another method that I've heard about is peanut butter. So I'm gonna give it a try. It says to spread it on liberally and then let it sit for about five or 10 minutes and let the oils penetrate into the adhesive. Okay, we've been 15 minutes and let's see if that scrapes off. I'm finding already that it, it's not working very well. It's not really lifting the adhesive at all. Um, I really don't know about this technique. Maybe some people have had some good results with it, but 
It's not working for me today. Now let's get this peanut butter washed off. And there you can see the residue that's still there that the peanut butter didn't take off. So back to the SOS pad and I'm going to show you how easily it'll take it right off. I actually have a video that I just made on how I paint my glass jars and get the paint to adhere to them really well. I'll put a link below in the description so you can watch that after you watch this video. Okay, now here's a method that I don't really like to use. It does work, but it is a chemical. My husband's a power sport mechanic and this is brake clean. He always has it in the garage. So if I have something really, really stubborn, it does work and it does take the residue off. If you're using it, make sure you do it in a good, well ventilated area. Keep a glove on. If you have don't have a glove on and you have nail polish and you spray this on your nails, say goodbye to your nail polish. I've learned that from experience. As you can see, it did take it off, but it worked just as well as the SOS pad. Now there's this patch on the back, and I'm gonna show you another method, which is WD-40. And again, I don't really like to use this. I'd rather stick to something natural, but it does work. Again, if you're gonna use this, make sure you wear a glove and a good ventilated area. Okay, now this gin label, the labels came off easy, but there seems to be like a painted label on the side, and I'm gonna see if I can try to get that off. Now I've read online that if you soak a paper towel in vinegar and wrap it around the bottle, and put it in a plastic bag and let it soak overnight that it will take that paint off. So let's give it a try. Okay, next morning, let's see if this worked. We'll untie the bag, we'll take the paper towel off and let's hope that painted label has come off. So far, it doesn't, doesn't look very promising. Doesn't look like it's going to work. And I'm kind of even wondering if it is paint. Maybe it's etched in there, but it doesn't look like it's etched. Um, I'm gonna give it a try with the SOS pad, but it's not even budging or scraping off. I'm just gonna wet the SOS pad a little bit and give it a scrub, but it's not budging. So I'm not quite sure what is even on this bottle, whether it's painted or etched right in. If you've ever ran into this, leave me a comment down below in the description. Okay, and the next method I'm going to show you is, this is an easy one too. If you don't wanna soak your wine bottles and you have a heat gun, then this technique works perfect. I've tried to use my hair dryer and my personal hair dryer doesn't get hot enough to remove the labels, but my husband has a heat gun, so um, I'm using his. And you just go up and down over the label, probably for about a minute to loosen all that glue and it should peel right off. And there you have the glass bottle. The labels just peeled right off. No glue residue, worked perfect. We are gonna do some crackle paint on some glass upcycled bottles. I have a wine bottle and I have a pickle jar. I'm gonna show you two different techniques that you can try to crackle paint. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna put a, just a light spritz of spray paint on these. It just helps the paint bond better to the glass. You can use a flat white spray paint I really like this primer, that's my go-to. I'm gonna take them outside and give them a light spray. The primer is all dry and it works fantastic as a base on glass. When you're doing this technique, you can use any sort of color combinations. My go-to is usually a darker color on the base and then a light white on the top. But like I said, you can play around and do whatever um, color combinations that you like. On the wine bottle, I'm gonna start with putting a base of black chalk paint. And for the pickle jar, I'm gonna use some really pretty blue. 
this paint is completely dry. This is a really good tip. You wanna make sure every coat of paint in between each coat is really, really dry. If you try to put the next coat on while well, this is still a little bit wet, when you paint it on, it's gonna lift the paint. Let it dry. We're now ready to start the crackle process. This is another little trick that I like to do for when you're working on glass bottles so the bottle doesn't roll all around. This is just a lint roller and it'll stick to the side of the bottle and it'll prevent it from rolling. When we're doing this crackle process, I like to do it in steps. I find that if you try to do the whole bottle all at once, I didn't have as good res as results. So we're gonna do panels, probably three panels before we've completed the whole bottle. Now to create some crackle on this one, I am going to be using hairspray. This works fantastic on wood to create track crackle, also works great on glass. I have a full tutorial on how I did a wooden sign with this. I'll put the link down below in the description. You can check it out. Any kind of hairspray will work. You just wanna make sure that you put a really thick coat of it on. So I'm just gonna spray it on one section and you want it to look really wet. And you can speed the process up with the heat gun. I find it works better than the hair dryer. The hair dryer has such a gush of air, it can kind of move stuff around. So if you have a heat gun, just put it on low setting and just dry that hairspray. My hairspray is completely dry. We're now going to add our top coat. I'm using some white chalk paint. You can use acrylic paint or latex paint, just whatever you have in your stash. What you wanna do with this is you don't wanna work it too many strokes. You wanna just kind of do long strokes and just in that area where we put hairspray. Now here's where I found it worked the best. I find it works better if you dry it with the heat gun. The crackles will turn out better and show up faster than just letting it air dry. So now that we've got this on, we're gonna use the heat gun and you will see the crackles appear. with a hairspray it's a very fine crackle it's not a real thick pronounced crackle but it's still beautiful but we're going to show you the Elmer's glue I really like the way that it crackles the next method I'm going to show you is with school glue any kind of school glue will work I just have the Elmer's on hand and we're going to put it in sections again like the last one we're just going to paint the Elmer's glue and you don't want a really thick coat. You just want it to completely cover that one area. You can get it right up around the rim if you want some crackles up there. This also works great on wood if you wanna try this technique on wood too. I have a full tutorial on how to create crackle paint for a base for your signs. And we're just gonna let that just kind of sit for about 30 seconds and just kind of get tacky. This is sat for about 30 seconds. Now we're gonna take the white chalk paint. And again, you don't wanna make too many strokes in it. You just wanna kind of make long strokes, maybe just going up and down a couple times. And we're going to get our heat gun and dry this. And look at the crackle with the Elmer's glue. We're gonna go on to the next panel. We're gonna put the Elmer's glue right up to where we left off, the same amount, and then add the paint on top. 
The reason that I do it in sections is I found when I did it standing up, gravity actually pulled the glue and the paint down and it didn't crackle as well. So I know this is a little bit more of a process doing it this way, but I do find that you'll have better results. And we're just gonna put that coat of white paint. We're not working it in too much. Once you get the hang of this, it, it goes really easy. And we're gonna get our heat gun and dry it up. And there's the crackle with the Elmer's glue. Out of the two methods, this is my favorite. Um, but if you're looking for just like a nice small crackle, then the hairspray works well. Now you're at the step where you can decoupage on top of this if you have some pretty napkins. I don't like doing a um, graphic transfer on top of these, the reverse one, because it is a little bit fragile and when you're putting water on to rub off the paper, it, it doesn't stick that well. But decoupaging is perfect. Or you can just seal them up and add embellishments on top. I'm gonna seal them up with my water-based polyacrylic sealer in satin. And there you have two different techniques to crackle paint on glass. If you wanna use the Elmer's glue, it gives a real pronounced crackle. And if you wanna try the hairspray, it gives more of a smaller crackle. I've added a couple tags on them, a full plant in the pickle jar, and I'm propagating my umbrella plant. And let me know down in the comments if you've ever tried either of these crackle techniques. Let's get started upcycling some glass jars and bottles. I save all of them. At some point though, I do get too many and I have to create lots and that's where I'm at right now. I've got a whole bunch of them. Oh my These are one of my best selling. Uh, you've seen me create my wooden signs with scrap wood. These come in a real close second for selling and um, making some money with them. So I always paint them and I add some graphics on them, I decoupage on them, and I'm gonna just show you a couple of the different designs today that might give you some ideas and get you inspired. But when you are going to paint glass, it has to be really, really clean. I use some rubbing alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol here. And first I wash it with some hot soapy water, and then I wash it, wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol because a lot of these glass jars, they have grease and grime that get on them and we want that paint to adhere really well. If we're gonna be selling a product, we don't want that paint chipping off two weeks after they buy it. So we want to make sure that we're cleaning it really, really well. So that's the first step. Second step. Now I do have a full tutorial on how to paint glass really in depth if you wanna catch back to my playlist and watch that. But the next step, is to spray it with a primer. You can just paint your glass jar without a primer, but I find when you're selling things, you want it to be really durable. So the primer is key here. And I just took it outside, I spritzed it. You don't need to cover it completely. You can see where I don't have it completely covered. You just need it sprayed so you have something for the chalk paint to grip onto and uh, let it dry and then you're ready to paint with chalk paint. So I'll just put this down here. I mix up my homemade chalk paint. I find when painting glass jars, chalk paint works best. I don't have very good results when using acrylic paint or just latex paint. It just does not adhere as well. So if you're painting glass, always mix up a batch of chalk paint and you'll get really good results. Um, I do have a chalk paint recipe on my channel and you can watch that if you wanna see how I make mine that I love. I also have a booklet in my Etsy store of all of my favorite paint recipes. You can grab that too. I kinda like myself, I like having the recipe right in front of me so I can look up the ingredients and the measurements and then mix it as I go. And that's, the booklet is really great for that. Um, so you can see I'm just doing long strokes. You don't wanna put it on thick. You just want the first coat to be a nice thin coat. Let it dry completely before you put on your next coat. Don't rush it. 
Uh, you can also use your heat gun if you want to speed up the process a little bit. Just don't hold it too close. Make sure you're, you're doing it a little bit of a ways away and uh, dry. So when I'm painting my glass jars, I'm going to do two coats of the chalk paint. Sometimes I'll even do three, depending on how white I want it, but definitely two coats, sometimes three. So we're just gonna set this aside and let it dry now. I was just talking about my um, paint recipe book. Now this one I've made kind of fancy, but it is in my Etsy store and I have all of my paint recipes tested. They all work fantastic, listed in this downloadable printable booklet. And I like it because if I want to mix up some sand paint, I whip out this booklet. I've got everything written down right here and I can make it. This has 11 recipes in it. So I'll put this down in the description if you want to have a look at that in my Etsy store. I have already done one of these and put my graphic on it because they have to dry. And I let them dry overnight, 24 hours. So I, I, I did this yesterday so I could show you guys today and it had to be dry um, to make sure that it's really dry. But I was just gonna show you because this is an example, putting the graphic on the bottle is the exact same as how I put the graphic on a piece of wood. I And I, I wanted to show you so I could show you how much Mod Podge I, I use because it's the same for on a sign as it is on a bottle. Using my Mod Podge mat, Again, I've painted this piece of scrap wood. I actually used some salt wash paint on this and really aggressively, and it gave it a really nice kind of chippy finish. But, so this is the graphic. If you're doing, so we're, right now what we're gonna do is the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. You have to make sure that you're reversing your text when you do this technique. And I printed this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text and sized it for my project. You're gonna do the exact same thing for the glass bottles. I'm just doing this piece of wood sign um, so I could show you because my graphic on my bottle had to sit overnight. So I wanted to show you ahead of time. And you can see I'm not putting very much on. I'm just putting a light coat on. The more Mod Podge you put on, the more of an outline you're gonna see. Uh, Mod Podge is thick, so if you're gobbing it on when you rub that paper off, you're gonna see the whole outline of your graphic, and we don't want that to happen. It doesn't take very much product to make this work. So we're just putting on a light coat, placing it down, exact same process on a glass bottle as it is on wood. Press it down, make sure you get all your bubbles and wrinkles out, and set it aside and let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna get this out of the road. We are going to go to our bottle. Same process, this is sat 24 hours. So I've got a sponge and a little bit of water. Now you have to, this is a little bit different than the wood because if you get too much water on your, gla on your glass where you've painted, it's going to lift that paint up. So you wanna make sure that you are just getting that water on the paper. If you get it over on the edges, you're gonna rub your paint off and it can be tricky. So you just wanna make sure that you're just getting it on the paper. Now, you can see that I can start to see my words show through. That's how we know we have enough uh, water on it. And just start in the middle of your graphic, rub the paper off and your graphic is gonna show through. So, like I said before, these are one of my best sellers right alongside of the wooden signs. If you're making stuff for craft sales or you're selling online or you're listing in Etsy, these are a really great addition to, and you have no cost because the bottle was already going in your recycling bin, so you don't have to go and buy any product to do this. And the other thing that I'll mention when you're doing glass bottles like this is don't start using a lot of funky colors. If I'm doing something to sell, I stick to just neutrals, whites, beiges. You don't wanna get like a funky pink because what's gonna happen is not everybody has pink in their home decor. So you're limited to who you can sell to. 
if you're just using neutral colors like white and black and beiges and neutrals, then you've opened up your potential customers a lot more by just doing, like I said, the neutral colors. So you just wanna go really slow. I can dip my finger in the water as it dries out, work in small areas and rub this graphic off. Now this graphic here, I'll just show you what it is. This is actually one of my most popular ones and it is a heaven quote. Uh, Those we love don't go away, they walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still love, still miss, and very dear. So this is a really beautiful quote and I love doing them on the bottles. They're great for people to buy and then give to a loved one who can remember, so they can remember someone that they've lost and it's just a thoughtful gift. Also, if you are a member of my channel or you're a member of my graphics club over on Patreon and you see any graphics that you like, make sure you're using your discount code because you can get 50% uh, off all of my graphics in my Etsy store. You can use an inkjet or a laser jet printer. It will work on both printers. It's just the inkjet does take a little bit more time and a little bit more patience when you're rubbing it off. I do have a comparison video on my channel comparing the inkjet and the laser jet after it's finished and uh, I find with the inkjet it just looks a little bit more faded. It just looks like it's um, a little bit more grayish than that really pop black color of the ink but it definitely can be done. So don't think that you're limited if you don't have a laser jet printer to do this craft because you can. If you are going to do a lot of these signs and bottles and you're doing it to make a little bit of extra money on the side, it would be worthwhile investing in a laser jet printer. It just will save you so much time and they just look crisper, they look nicer, I find in my opinion anyways. If you're just doing a project here and there, you can definitely get away with using a um, an inkjet printer. So the paper that you're using when you're doing this transfer method is the cheapest computer paper that you can find. If you're using a thick computer paper, then of course it's gonna be more paper to rub off and it's gonna take you longer. So I just buy the Amazon paper. It's cheap, it's not very thick, and it's really easy to rub off. If you're using a really good quality paper, then it just makes sense that you, you're gonna have more paper to rub off. So that's something that you can look into when you're doing this transfer is just make sure you're not using something that's good quality. It takes a little bit of patience, takes a little bit of time, and I find it really relaxing. I just kind of grab a tea or a coffee and then I just sit and I just rub the paper off and I find it really relaxing. So you can see right here in the corner, I've almost got all the paper rubbed off. And I just like working in small sections and going along and rubbing it off as I go. So I'll, I'll just leave this for now because you guys don't need to see me rub this whole thing off, but you get the point of rubbing the graphic off. This is a beautiful heaven quote. Once I've rubbed all of the graphic off, I will seal it up with some spray polyacrylic sealer. I find I like this the best. You can seal it up with Mod Podge. I don't like Mod Podge as a finished coat. I don't think it looks as nice as using this spray polyacrylic sealer. This also comes in a brush on too. You can use either, they both work great. And I like the matte finish, but you can do a gloss or semi-gloss finish too, depending on your preference. So once I rub all of the paper off, then I'll seal that up with the polyacrylic sealer. And then you can add something onto the neck of it to embellish it. So I have another one here. It's gonna show you, same thing. This is another graphic that I love. Be kind. And we're just gonna wet it with the water. You can make your own homemade Mod Podge and it is perfect for decoupaging, but for some reason, whatever they put in the formula of the Mod Podge, that allows it to transfer, it does not work with the homemade Mod Podge. So if you're wanting to do this method with the school glue, um, I, it doesn't work that great. 
you can get it to transfer a little bit and definitely it could be something that you could experiment with but it doesn't work as great as Mod Podge. Now and this one is rubbing off really nicely. This one I might see if I can get it. We'll stick on here and finish the whole thing so I can show you how I'll finish it off. And this graphic is, I printed these off so you can see, is this graphic here. It's in my Etsy store. Again, if you want to craft with them, you can head over there and you can check that out. I started a Patreon group for my graphics and the support has been overwhelming. You guys are loving it. So I'll just explain while I'm rubbing off here how it works. Within the Patreon, I started a club, a graphic club, where if you sign up, you get any new graphic that I have uploaded into my Etsy store that month. So you are guaranteed to get at least 20 graphics and it's $6.99 a month. They're sent right to your inbox. You have a PNG, a JPEG, one of these reverse files for every image that I do. You can pick which one you want to craft with and you can you can use it, which is a fantastic deal because my graphics and my Etsy store are $2.50 a piece. So I think if you get 20 graphics, that works out to 35 cents a piece. So I'm all about sharing my graphics affordably so you guys can make things like these, go to a sale, sell it, and not have to spend a whole bunch of money on graphics either when you're doing it. So it's a great deal. The link is in, I've got it pinned at the top of the comments if anybody's interested in joining and uh, joining me over on Patreon for the Graphics Club. And they come out, so what we do is we are sending out the graphics every Friday night at midnight. It'll go to your inbox, so when you wake up Saturday morning, the graphics will be there and you can look through them, download them to your computer, craft with them and they also are not copyrighted so you don't have to worry about when you make something with one of my graphics and paying a copyright free I just want you to be able to use them so that's a that's a bonus too so this one's coming off really nice I want to get this one off because I want to show you another little thing that I like to do with these bottles oh the other thing that we should talk about is how to price how I price my DIYs. Now, everybody is going to be a little bit different for how much you can sell them for. Of course, if you're in the city, you're probably gonna be able to sell them for more than in the country. So it's kind of just a general idea, but I have a formula that I use when I'm pricing my DIYs and it works well for me. If you're doing a project that's gonna take you 18 hours to complete, this formula is not gonna work. This is for small DIY crafts that, um, that you know, you can do in 20 minutes, a half an hour. And I have a, a video, a step-by-step -step video with all of those formulas and instructions in that video to guide you along if you wanna learn how to price your DIYs. I have a booklet in my Etsy store too that has the everything that you need to price your items at the, uh, and, and it goes through step by step, wholesale, retail, calculating it all. Really helpful if you're going to start into um, flea markets or craft sales or if you have a booth, that's a, a great starting point for pricing your things. So that's in my Etsy store if you wanted to check that out also. So when I'm rubbing these off, I'm not actually using a lot of pressure. It's just, and you can feel the paper roll up underneath your fingers um, and you can see like I'm not putting a lot of pressure I'm just kind of rubbing circular motion and the papers rolling off if you're like really reefing on it yeah it's probably gonna hurt your fingers but I don't you don't need to you don't need to put a lot of pressure on them so here we've done a reverse graphic transfer with my laser jet printer on a bottle these sell fantastic how cute is this this is just an empty wine bottle. What I think I want to do, and I wanted to show you guys, because I wanted to finish it, is sometimes, because they're black and white, if you have a colored laser, then you're gonna be able to do colored um, graphics, but my laser jet printer just has black ink in it. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll just grab my uh, acrylic paint and just add a little color to it. 
You don't need to very much. It's almost like a dry brush. And you can just add a pop of color onto it. Doesn't that look great? How do you know when to stop rubbing? So you will know, I'll just bring this up. You will know when to stop rubbing when you have a nice crisp black line. So see right here on the D, it's still a little bit cloudy. I haven't gotten all the paper off. So I can go back in, rub it, and you can feel, you'll get the feel of it while you're doing it. So I don't feel any paper on there. It's all gone. And see how that cloudiness is gone? That's how you know you've got all your paper off. So I'm just taking my acrylic paint and just kind of dry, almost dry brushing. You don't want very much because you don't want it to leak through into your black ink. But it just kind of gives it a pop of color. I like doing this when I'm doing a graphic transfer that has like fl a floral print and you can add all kinds of different colors and uh, makes it look nicer. I, this is one of my favorite graphics. I love this Be Kind. And you can also just take your finger and dab it so you get all the extra off. And the same thing, like once we're finished this, I will seal this all up with a polyacrylic sealer and it gives it a really nice finish and it seals everything in. So there, that's all ready to be sealed up and I love it. Oh, Let's go on to another one that I did. I'm gonna show you this one. So this was, I think this was actually an apple cider vinegar bottle. I spray painted on my primer, put on two coats of chalk paint and then what I did, because I want this to look kind of like, well, an antique look. I have a little bit of instant coffee and water. It's almost dry actually. And what I did was I just took it and just dabbed it all over the glass. It soaked into the chalk paint and it gave this rustic kind of stippled look. And then I sealed this up with um, Mod Podge. And this is what we ended up getting. This is on here really good. You can see it's not scratching off. I'm going to put this graphic on it. So this is a graphic, I did this ahead of time, but very simple. Printed this off on my laser jet printer. You can print this off also on your inkjet printer, but if you're going to, sorry, I coffee stained the paper first, and then I print it on it with my laser jet printer. If you're using an inkjet printer, after you've printed on it, spray it with hairspray to seal in your graphic so the ink doesn't run. I find if I put two good coats of hairspray on and then I decoupage, then my graphic isn't going anywhere. And then what I did was I sealed this up a little bit with Mod Podge on the top of the graphic and we're just going to decoupage it onto the bottle. So I'm just gonna go back to my Mod Podge mat. So we're just putting some Mod Podge on our graphic here. You want quite a bit on this one. And this one you don't have to use the store-bought Mod Podge when you're doing the decoupaging. You can mix up some of your homemade Mod Podge and decoupage on too. Then we're going to find where we want it on the bottle. I think right here. We're gonna decoupage. Now this one, I just ripped, you can see how it's a ragged edge. I just ripped it around the edges so it gives it more of an antique look. Oh, I love this. I've really been drawn lately to primitive decor. I don't know, I just love it that even, like I love farmhouse, but even going that extra little step to that primitive grungy, I'm really liking it. So what I'd like to do now is you can embellish the top with a ribbon. This is actually an old stained tea towel that I didn't want to throw out. So I cut it into strips and now I'm using it as ribbon and it's great to use on the projects like this. You can just kind of tie it on and just use some scissors to cut it off. And you can even add some nice, I have some nice greenery here. You can even add some nice greenery and isn't that great? And all it is, upcycled bottle out of the recycling bin and we've created this. Another way that you can upcycle some glass bottles. This, how stinking cute is this cow? 
it's in my Etsy store. What I've done with this, this was printed on my inkjet printer. So this is to prove that you can use an inkjet printer. I printed it off. First of all, I sized it for my project. I do have a video on how to size graphics. That's a great one too, you can check that out. Um, did this on my inkjet printer. Sprayed it with two coats of Firm Set hairspray. And then I put on a coat of Mod Podge. This ink is now not going anywhere. And then I'm just gonna cut it off my sheet of paper. I've got a little line from my printer there we're gonna get rid of. Cut right along the line. And cut along here. And we've got our graphic cut out that we can now decoupage on our bottle. Isn't that adorable? We're gonna use our Mod Podge mat. And put quite a bit on. You need to use a little bit more when you're decoupaging than when you're doing the transfer method. It, it takes a bit more to get it to adhere. So the thing with glass bottles and jars is you can also, it's so seasonal. At Christmas time, at Christmas time, the heaven quotes sell the best. Uh, or Christmas graphics on them, personalize them. If you wanna do uh, mason jars, you can paint them, put a graphic on them or personalize them and then fill them full of goodies if you wanna make them for gifts. Just, it's endless what you can do. And then we're just, I'm gonna push this on, getting all bubbles and wrinkles out. Oh, I just love this little cow on here with the flower crown. And then you can just put a light coat of Mod Podge on top of this, or you can use the um, polyacrylic sealer, which is my choice. I like the polyacrylic sealer, but I'm just putting on the Mod Podge just to show you what we got going on here. Seal it up. Don't skip. Don't skip this step because. Again, if you're gonna sell these, you want them sealed up really well. These are never washable. These are can be dusted and they can be wiped down with a damp rag, but they can't be like thrown in the dishwasher and washed. They just won't hold up at all. Okay, so how cute is that? And then to finish this one off, I would probably, I've got some little burlap ribbon. I would probably get out my glue gun and then glue the ribbon along the top. That would be really cute. Another option would be, um, this is actually a bed sheet. It was a white bed sheet, cotton bed sheet. I coffee stained it and then ripped it into strips. And uh, you can pick up a bed sheet at the thrift store for like under $5. And you will not imagine the amount of ribbon that you can get out of one bed sheet, just cutting it into strips. You'll have enough ribbon for a year to do your crafting projects with. And you can rip them into strips and then color them different colors so you have all kinds of different rib ribbons to use. That's just a little idea anyways that you can do. And then just put your, maybe tie it into a bow, cut the ends a bit. You guys are all crafters. You know, you can just put your spin and your twist on all of these things. This is just kind of giving you some ideas. And then you can put some faux flowers in. Now I know we're kind of on the wrong angle here, but, and it's not quite dry, but how cute is that? And they sell fantastic. Mm. back into the recycling bin again. I love this barbecue sauce, but the bottle is even cuter. And with that little wooden knob, I just love it. So I'm always saving them. Now we're gonna get out the dollar store twine again, and we're just gonna do some simple knots for this project. This is really easy to do. You're going to measure out a length of twine that's a little bit bigger than the neck of your bottle, and then do a double knot so it's nice and tight, and then cut off the ends. 
and then you can pull it off of your bottle. Now we're going to take our twine and we're going to measure out a piece of twine that's three times the length of the bottle. Now you want to have eight of those strands the same length. Once you have those cut, we're going to take that ring that we made from the top of the bottle and we're going to fold those pieces of twine in half and we're going to attach them to that ring. This is a great project to do if you don't know how to macrame but you love the look because all you need to do is know how to tie a basic knot. And we're just going to add those longer eight pieces of twine to that ring that's going to sit on the top of the bottle. Now we're going to place it on top of the bottle and we're going to take those two inside strands from either side and just tie a basic knot. Again, this is probably easier just to watch visually than have me explain it. Now we finished that first row, we're going to go on to the second row and we're going to take those inside pieces, we're creating a diamond pattern and we're going to repeat this back and forth until we get to the bottom of the bottle. Now we're all finished and I just gathered up the twine at the bottom and I attached it just like we did in our tassel using the loop, looping it through and pulling it tight and trimming the edges. And now I'm going to make a little hanger for the top of the bottle. I've cut three pieces of twine in the length that I want for the hanger on my bottle and I'm just braiding it. And this is how easy it is to create a little hanger. We're going to use our hot glue gun and we're going to glue it on there. And, and then once I have the two sides glued on, I'm going to go back in with some twine and I'm going to add twine around the neck of the bottle to secure everything really well in place. I have this glass bottle that I tinted a nice amber color. Full tutorial on how to achieve this look, really easy. But I want to put a label on it, a nice kind of antique looking label. I'm going to use this paper that I just made that I coffee stained to make a label for the bottle. I'm going to measure the size of the graphic that I want. And then I am going to put this paper through my printer and print right on it. And we'll have an antique looking label. I've printed out my graphic on the paper and I'm just going to cut it down to size. And then we're going to decoupage it on with my Mod Podge mat. Now, because we've cut this and the edges aren't discolored anymore, I'm just going to take my sponge that has that coffee and just kind of sponge it along. Oh, there's how much of a mess I make. Sponge it along and make it look more authentic. We're going to set that aside and just let it dry for a little bit. We're going to add the Mod Podge onto the back and then we're going to put it on our bottle. These, this technique is fantastic at Halloween time to make potion bottles and spooky looking bottles, but I also like doing them 
in the far farmhouse theme. So we're just gonna take our bottle and just center it on and set it aside and let it dry. So we have a bottle that I picked up at the thrift store that I tinted and then I added a fantastic label with packing paper, coffee dyed. I love the way that it looks. And the paper that's left over, I have this label cutter that I've had for forever and it works perfect for cutting out really nice labels. I put a hole in the top, put some twine through it, and you have some fantastic little gift tags. And this one is seriously so easy, but it turns out so adorable. Cut a piece of packing paper, a little bit bigger than your glass jar. I've just taken some and kind of rolled it and twisted it so it fits around the jar and some elastics. I'm just gonna take this and scrunch it right up, make it nice and wrinkly. It also makes it easier to work with when you've got it crunched right up because it kind of softens it a little bit. I'm gonna place the glass jar in the middle, get our elastics, and just gather it up all at the top, take those elastics, and you might have to double up on it so it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna trim off around the top. Got it all trimmed up around the top. And then we're just gonna take our twisted piece and cover up that elastic and just glue it with a little bit of hot glue. I've added a full plant in the middle. You can put some fresh flowers. This would make a fantastic gift. I added one of my homemade paper tags I have a tutorial on how to make homemade paper. Really simple, really easy. You can check that out also. But how quick and easy is this to whip this up with some packing paper? Another way to use up some packing paper is to wrap up a bottle of wine for a gift. Another really simple way, but it looks so elegant when you're all finished. I printed off smile there's wine and that's on that piece of paper that I coffee stained and I put it through my printer and printed this I just have a homemade tassel that I made and I'm going to add that on and a per piece of jute grab a bottle of wine for your next dinner party and wrap it up with some packing paper I really love this I think it turned out really beautiful and I think anybody would love to have a bottle of wine wrapped like this. For this packing paper upcycle, I've just got a glass jar that I've saved from the recycling bin and I'm taking my packing paper and just twisting it into a long rope. And you wanna twist it quite tight. It probably will unravel a little bit on you, but that's okay. So I'm gonna twist this all up and then we're gonna put on some of our um, homemade Mod Podge. Okay, we got all kinds, all twisted up. Now we're gonna get messy. Homemade Mod Podge, I'm gonna add a little bit of acrylic paint, just a brown color, just to, we're gonna tint that paper a little bit. I don't want too much, cause I just kind of want a beige color mint we're just gonna mix it up really well now we're gonna put that paper in that mod podge this is gonna get really messy it's gonna get your hands dirty but we just want to coat it with a little bit of that glue so when it dries it'll stay together you don't have to completely soak it and then as we're pulling it out I'm gonna retwist it again so it'll go back into its shape And after we have this all coated up, I'm gonna set it aside and we're gonna let it dry. Not dry completely, but enough that it's gonna hold its shape. We've got these all twisted up and they're almost dry. So they're a little bit stiff. They're really ugly right now, but stay tuned because it's gonna get really pretty. We are just gonna hot glue 
this all around the whole glass jar until it's completely covered. I've got it all covered and it's all dry. It leaves such an amazing texture on this glass jar. We're gonna paint it now. I've got some acrylic paint and I have a little bit of that coffee solution left over from when I dyed the packing paper. We're gonna combo back and forth between the two until I get a color that I like. All finished. I hot glued a wooden bowl that I had in my stash on the bottom. I think it has real boho vibes. Put a faux plant in the top. Hard to believe this was made out of a great big bundle of packing paper. I had this huge pickle jar that I've washed out really well. Sometimes it's really hard to get the pickle smell out. Little tip, soak it overnight in a little bit of bleach in your kitchen sink. I've taken it outside and I'm gonna give it just a light coat of spray paint. This will just help my project adhere better than just being on straight glass. For this project, I'm using some modeling clay, air dry clay that I can find at my dollar store and it works really well. Uh, if you can't find it at your dollar store, you can always find it at your local craft store or Michael's or on Amazon and the DAS modeling clay works really well. I'm gonna flatten this out until it's about a quarter of an inch thin and just kind of flipping it over. I've got it on a piece of parchment paper that's dusted with a little bit of cornstarch and I'm just gonna roll it out until I know that it'll almost go around my whole jar. Before we put the clay on the jar, I'm coating it with just a light coat of my Mod Podge matte. You can use any type of Mod Podge gloss matte because we're not gonna see it. It's going to be underneath and it's acting as a glue on the clay. Now while the Mod Podge is still wet, we're going to roll it in that air dry clay and shape it around that pickle jar. Um, it might not fit, I might need a little to add a little bit more, but once we get it on the jar, we're gonna mold it and shape it so it fits really well around the edges and everything. So you can always add little bits if you need to, uh, to get it completely covered. Okay, I got it completely covered. I had to add little bits and pieces of clay here and there. Now I haven't completely covered the bottom, but I've rolled it around the edge a little bit. And now I'm just taking some water, dipping my fingers in the water, and I'm just smoothing it out, making sure that it's really blended in really well. And I haven't missed any places uh, with some clay and just making sure that it's really sealed well around that whole pickle jar. Now I have this metal table that I have in my shed that I paint on, it's covered in paint. But when I put the parchment paper down and roll that pickle jar in it, the texture it creates from all that paint on the table is fantastic. So a mess has created something beautiful. Now I'm gonna use one of my molds that I made. I just posted a video, DIY silicone molds, and what you can create for your DIY projects with these molds are beautiful. This is just one of them. I used a little dollar store frame to create this mold and I'm putting the air dry clay into it. And then very carefully, I'm going to take it out of the mold and isn't this gorgeous? We're gonna add this right into the middle of the pickle jar. Now to get this to stick to our jar, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. The bristles are kind of stiff in this. We're going to dip it in some water and then press it quite hard into that clay. And we're going to do the top of that piece with the frame mold and add some water onto that and scratch it up a little bit. And then we're going to very carefully press it down. You don't wanna press it too hard because you don't wanna lose any of that detail in the molds and set it aside and let it dry. Now I decided I wanted to add two little handles on either side. So I've rolled out a piece of the clay and I'm just gonna shape it until I like the shape of it and it looks like a handle. It's gonna prove to be a little bit tricky to get both sides the same, but I'm gonna do the best that I can and just kind of mold it and press it into that clay so it attaches really well. Once you see this all finished, you will never throw out another glass jar in your recycling bin. You will want to turn all of them into little mini crocs. I'm obsessed. Okay, I think I'm happy with the way that it looks. I've got the handles on, the mold on the front. We're gonna set it aside and let it dry overnight. Now, I don't want you all to panic because the next day, this is what it looks like. Air dry clay shrinks. So when we put it around the jar, 
as it dries, it pulls apart and it creates these fantastic cracks. So, but we're gonna embrace it and I'm gonna show you the next step. We are now gonna decoupage over this whole pickle jar. I've got one ply of a napkin and I've tore it into little pieces and we're just using the Mod Podge mat and we're going to add those pieces all over that whole pickle jar. Just putting a light coat of Mod Podge over each piece of that little torn napkin and then getting the next one and layering it up until it's completely covered. And this is what it looks like. You can still see the indents of the cracks, which we want to embrace, but it's going to make it nice and sturdy and strong. It's also giving it a very authentic look of an old antique crock. If you've never used air dry clay before, don't be intimidated. It's really easy to work with, and I didn't use any special tools to create this crock. I've got it completely covered with that torn napkin. Now I didn't put any on the mold because it will be fine and it has adhered really well, but we're gonna set this aside, let it dry completely before we finish it off. It took a couple hours for it to dry completely, but now it's ready to paint. I'm mixing up just some acrylic paint and I'm trying to get the look of an antique crock, which is almost like a linen color that I see in most photos. And I'm going to apply this with a sponge. The sponge will just give that texture of a crock more than if you have brush strokes in it. And you can see as I'm applying that paint, you're still gonna see those big cracks and you're gonna see all that texture just by putting a light coat of that acrylic paint on. I had some of this antiquing dust from Country Chic and I'm gonna use that. I think it's just gonna give it a little bit more of an aged look. You can also use a dark wax or you could even rub some mud into it or some um, dirt and it would give you kind of the same effect. This is just a dust that you just kind of dab on. It's gonna stay in the little nooks and crannies and just give it more of an aged look. Now I created these graphics. They're available in my Etsy store. If you wanna try this project for yourself, I'll put the link down below in the description, but I absolutely love them. And I'm, for this one, only gonna use the number five. So I've cut that out and we're going to apply it right in the middle of that frame. I printed this graphic off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text and I sized it. I'm putting a liberal amount of Mod Podge completely over it. You wanna put quite a bit on because the clay is absorbent and you might not have a really good transfer if you don't get enough Mod Podge on there. I've let it sit overnight. This is the next day, put a little tiny bit of water on it. You wanna go really slow or you're going to reactivate that clay. Do little small sections, dip your finger back in the water if you need to, and just take your time and you'll get a great graphic transfer. Now that I've got that all done, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna seal it up with a polyacrylic sealer using the matte finish. And I am in love with this. I've made some of these and I always really love the way that they turned out, so that's why I wanted to share this technique with you today. And like I said, you'll never look at glass jars the same way now. Imagine all of the possibilities. And if you haven't had a chance to check out my video where I DIY'd some silicone molds, you gotta watch that one. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can take glass jars and turn them into beautiful rope lanterns for your home decor. I always save all of my glass jars. I rescue them out of the recycling bin and I'm going to take them down and wash them really, really well in some hot soapy water. Sometimes these pickle jars is really stubborn to get the smell of the pickles out of them, but I do find if you can't do that, soak it overnight in a little bit of bleach and water in your uh, sink and that usually gets rid of it. So let's get started. Now I want these glass jars to have a little bit of a nautical feel, so I'm gonna tint the glass. I have a full tutorial on how to do this. It's a really simple technique, so I'm just gonna kinda go fast through it right now, um, but it's gonna create a nice sea glass look on each of these jars. I'm gonna do a light green and a light blue, and this is just gel food coloring. I'll put the links below in the description of all the products that I'm using today to create these lanterns. This is such an easy technique. Some Elmer's glue, some food coloring, swirl it around in your glass jar, and then make sure it's covered completely. And when you're all finished, it leaves a really neat tinted looking glass. Like I said before, I have a full tutorial. Check that out after you watch this. 
These are all coated really well. Now they're gonna be in put in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius. And every five minutes, I'm gonna turn them upside down and up until they're dry. It usually takes, um, and depending on your oven, anywhere between a half an hour to an hour, and it will dry uh, translucent and look beautiful. I've got them in the oven and I'm just going to dry them out now. Isn't this blue a beautiful color from using that Elmer's glue technique to create tinted glass? I just love it. Now I'm gonna measure out a bunch of jute the length of the jar. Okay, I have them all cut out now, and now I'm gonna hot glue them onto the jar. I love my Gorilla hot glue gun sticks. Uh, it works fantastic for this. I'll put a link down below. And I'm just going to put one on the front side, and then I'm gonna flip it over and put one on the opposite side. So when I'm laying these down, they're all gonna be evenly dispersed around the jar. I've put eight pieces of jute around the jar and now I'm just gonna hot glue the ends of them just to make sure that they're secured down really well on the base. I used eight pieces of jute to go around the outside of the jar and now I'm going to put two pieces around the jar in the diameter. I'm gonna cut them the length that I need and then hot glue them on. create a handle for this lantern. I've got a piece of the jute and I'm gonna untwist it so I can take apart all of the ends and then I'm going to tape it down to my table and I'm gonna braid it and I think that makes a really cute looking handle. I've got it braided to the length that I need and then I'm just gonna tie a little knot in the end of each braid just to hold it in place while I place it on the lantern. Now we're ready to hot glue that on. I'm going to put a little bit of the hot glue there and then attach it, press it down so it um, attaches really firmly. And then I'm gonna go to the opposite end of the jar and glue it down on that side. Now I'm gonna take a piece of jute and wrap it around the neck of the bottle to cover up that handle and just make it have more of a finished look. Okay, now we're ready to work on the second one. I'm gonna use a thinner jute for this one. I'm gonna wrap the jute around the glass bottle just a little bit bigger than it is. I wanna have a loose circle that I can lift off after I tie a little knot in it. And I love the color of this green and the way that it turned out. It gives me real beach vibes. And as you can see, I tied it just loose so you can lift that um, circle off. Now you want to cut a whole bunch of strings six times the length of your glass jar. That will ensure that you have enough when you're tying your knots for this project. And I'm gonna cut 12 for this um, project. Every jar is gonna be different, so you can kind of determine how many you want to cut, but you always want to make sure that you, had, you have even numbers. You're gonna fold that jute in half, and then we're gonna do a lark's head knot around that circle. And you're gonna add all 12 of those jute strings around that circle using the lark's head knot. Okay, now we have it all done. We're gonna lift it up and we're gonna put that circle over the top of the jar and space them out so they're evenly distributed along the neck of that jar. Now we have this all distributed around the neck of the bottle and all you have to do now is know how to tie a knot. This is so simple and it'll create a beautiful looking lantern. Now you can see those two four strings. I'm gonna take the two inside strings of those and just tie a knot. And you wanna just kind of tie it to where you want it to lay on your jar and then 
Keep going all the way around the jar, making sure that you have all of your knots all on the same line and not uneven and the same tightness and just work away on that. I finished the first row and now we're going to start on the second row. So now we're going to go and make it like a diamond. We're going to take those two inside strings and then knot them together and that's going to create that diamond grid looking um, cover for your lantern. Okay, and I have it all done, but now you have all this extra string at the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna trim off that string so it's easier to work with to glue it down to the bottom of the pickle jar. And I'm gonna glue each of those jute strings into the center of the um, jar. And then I'm gonna cut out a little piece of cardboard, put some hot glue, gun, uh, hot glue on it, and then glue that right down to keep everything in place. And it's nice and neat and tidy. For the Green Lantern, I'm gonna put in a battery-operated candle. It looks really cute in that. You can also put a votive in. And this Blue Lantern, I'm gonna put some sand in the bottom of it to give it that real beach nautical look. And then I'm gonna put a votive right into the sand and your lanterns are complete. And aren't these darling? And the pickle jars were free out of the recycling bin. I had some leftover jute that I used up for this project and I love the way that they turned out. Beautiful gifts and really simple to make. Today's DIY, I've got a glass jar. I've got a candle. This candle actually came from, um, originally came from Michael's, I think, but I found it at the thrift store and it was like $2. It, it wasn't used. I've actually used it once, but I brought this in because we can do this trick on this also. And I've got a peanut butter jar. The first thing that you're gonna have to look for, or maybe you even have some in your office supply stash, are CD labels or address labels. You've seen me, if you've been following along, you've seen me use these before in lots of um, graphic transfer techniques. I find these all the time at the thrift store because people don't use CDs anymore. And these are the labels that they used to put on top of the CDs. And you can find the address labels there has not been a time in my area where I have gone into thrift store and I have not found some of these. You can buy them at the um, at your office supply store. They can be a bit pricey, so make sure that you're looking uh, in the thrift store. Now, another hack is I have had people say that they've had really good luck using um, the back of the Cricut paper. You know that that um, slick paper on the back of the Cricut vinyl, that it also works with that too. I haven't tried it, but I have had friends that have tried it and it's worked for them. So if you can't get your hands on some CD labels or address labels, then uh, try that little trick too. Um, now, the first, so the first thing that we wanna do is you just wanna peel off. We don't need these labels. You can use these for another project. I always kind of set them aside and you can uh, incorporate them into your paper crafting or something like that. But yeah, we're just gonna peel these off. When we're printing on this, we don't want the ink to soak into the paper. So that's what we need this paper for. So you can see the one side's paper and then this side's shiny. So what we're gonna do now is I've gone into my graphics program. I've picked out some graphics. I've put them in my Google Docs and I've sized them for my projects. Uh, and then I printed. So my printer, it feeds through like this. So I've put my paper in printed on it and 
this is what I've got. So this is printed with my laser printer on the shiny side, all sized and ready to go. It's that simple. If you see any of these graphics that I'm using today and you like them, they're all available in my Etsy store, uh, so you can grab them. These are all really good sellers. Okay, so now we're just gonna cut these down. You don't wanna cut it right to the edge. You wanna leave a little bit of a border. Um, now you have to be careful that you're not touching the toner because it will rub off. So you wanna be really careful. And you want to get your lines as straight as you can. You. Okay, so the next step is page protector. This came from the dollar store, Dollarama. It was $1.25. I actually found these at the thrift store. It was a pack of three. I haven't even broken into them yet because I haven't had to. I got three of them for $1.99. So check the craft uh, section at the thrift store. You might be able to find some of this also. If not, pick it up at Dollarama. I have done this technique before and I've had people ask me, if they can use the um, contact paper or the shelf liner, you can, um, but I find the page protector is a little bit thinner than the, um, than the other. So this just kind of blends a little bit better if you can find that. So that's what you need next, the page protector. So I have a piece cut already and we're just going to cut out a piece just a little bit and again we don't want to touch that toner because it will rub off we're just going to cut a piece the same size as our graphic and then because this is always hard to get off we're going to I, I'm just using my little Cricut tool my little weeder there we go okay so we're going to I just like to start it and just peel a little bit off at the top. Center it exactly where you want it. We don't want any bubbles or wrinkles, so we want to be really careful with this step. And then just slowly peel away the backing. Now I've just got my Cricut tool again, and we really want to press that right into that page protector really press it in you want to use a firm hand we want this nice and neat because it's going to go on our glass jar and we don't want any wonky lines we're going to flip this over we're going to catch the backing we're going to peel that backing off and look at it stays on that page protector isn't that so cool? Now, so this is why you have to really rub it in because you want that ink to transfer. See how it's coming right off the paper? It's transferred right onto that. So then we have this candle that's a glass jar. It's not painted. We want this to blend in. You can just set it on your candle. So, you can imagine the possibilities with this technique. Customizing, personalizing, seasonal, so many ideas of what you can do with this technique. So if you can find the supplies to do this, uh, it's so much fun. So, Let's do another one. I love this quote. So we're gonna cut this one out. Again, we don't wanna touch the toner. You want to get straight lines, as straight as you can get. Try not to touch it here. Okay, we're going to pick this up. We're going to cut a piece of that page protector. Just a little tiny bit bigger. Pull down the top a little bit. And we want to make sure we take our time, have it centered and laying flat and then slowly press it down get our Cricut tool really press it in okay. now we're going to trim off that extra because we want it to look nice and neat look at that isn't that so cool we're gonna peel it away. 
this one this is a peanut butter jar this is plastic so I'm going to show you because this is sticky so you can basically stick it to anything we're going to stick it right on here and then once you stick it of course it's the sticker you can it peels right off too so it's not permanent it can come off and you can stick it on something else um great fun little DIY to do with kids too they could make these before they go back to school for their binders or their booklets you can personalize stuff let's do the just give me um a coffee and a thrift store this is my life if I can have if I can go to a little local cafe get a latte and then go to the thrift store that is my best day ever cut this a little bit bigger there we go Let's clean this up. Do the magic. And just go slow. How cool is this? I love this. There we go. Okay. And we can put it right on our glass jar. And these are fan like such fantastic gifts to give a friend too that uh you know, if you don't have a lot of money and you don't want to spend a lot or you just like giving thrifted or upcycled gifts, you could do one of these, fill it up with some treats or cookies um, and it's a nice little gift. Okay, so I thought with this, this would make a really great gift. If you headed, if you head to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or if you're even in the thrift store and you can find a new candle like this, Put a nice little graphic on it. You can add a little gift tag. This is just a piece of scrapbooking paper that I coffee stained. Um, I've got some twine. I'm just going to, I'll cut a piece of twine. We'll just tie it onto that little rim of the candle. And then just add your gift tag. You can write a little note on it and isn't it, wouldn't somebody just love getting this little gift? I think it's just a really pretty little gift. Now, how is that for a fantastic gift? I love that one. Okay, so this one, this is what I was thinking for this one. I would fill this up with treats and, or um, you could season your craft room. You could do, that's another thing that you could use this for. Do labels that are for your craft room, like for elastics, paper clips, and you can label them all with the little stickers and then save your plastic jars. But I cut a round piece of scrapbooking paper because we got our, I mean, he's cute, but we know it's a peanut butter jar and we don't want that if we want it to look cute. So I've got this, um, if, you're, if you have never tried this glue, it's fantastic, the Beacon 3-in-1. It's great glue. Um, I'm just going to, I cut this circle the same size as the lid. We're gonna add some glue. You can't throw this in the dishwasher. This is just for, just for decor or for fun. If you put this in the dishwasher, of course, it's gonna come off, but it just kinda finishes it off nice and covers it up from being just a peanut butter jar. I had some packing paper from an Amazon package. I just crumpled it up and I didn't do anything with the lid. I just left it as is and crumpled it up. And then I thought you could just put it around. I have a piece of, here's a, a hack. If you want some ribbon, uh, really affordable. I went to the thrift store. I bought an old bed sheet, brought it home. I washed it really well and then I um, puffy stained it and then cut it into strips. I'm gonna make this strip a little bit thinner. Cut it into strips and uh, it, you got ribbon for, I mean, if you got a bed sheet and you're turning it into ribbon, holy doodle, you've got like a lot, a lot of ribbon. And then you can just kind of tie it 
around. We'll just, you can do a nice little sprig of greenery too if you wanted. And, and then just trim so it looks nice and neat. Trim around the edges. Yes. But look at that. Can you imagine if you put some chocolate chip cookies in here uh, and then did a nice lid? What a great gift. DIY, I guess they're kind of like a sticker um, for your glass jars and bottles. These are my glass jars that I have just pulled out of the recycling bin. I've saved them. Um, this looks like it might have been a little wine bottle. This was a jar of olives, two pickle jars. And what I did was I painted my glass first. I have a full tutorial on how to paint glass properly because it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, and if you don't do it properly, when you do this technique, as soon as, you, as soon as you introduce the water on it, you're gonna rub that paint off underneath. So if you haven't seen that video, how to paint glass jars and bottles, I'll put that link after this video is done, I'll put that link down below in the description because um, it's really key to this process to have it work properly, to have your paint, uh, your paint, your glass painted properly. And it is just a little bit of primer and some, I use my homemade chalk paint and the chalk paint is what's key for this technique. Let me know down in the comments if you have tried this technique on glass jars or bottles before and whether you've had some success with it. Um, this one is a beautiful tea graphic that, and all the graphics on all of my projects are available in my Etsy store. Uh, if you haven't gone over and checked that out, you can, you can head over there and check my Etsy store out. If you're a channel member, make sure you're using your coupon for 50% off. And if you're a Patreon member of my graphics club, um, you can get 70% all of my off of all of my graphics. And my with my Patreon club, you get graphics delivered to your inbox every Friday night at midnight uh, for you to craft with. So okay, so what I did, this is just a little dish of water a little rag, just a little tiny rag. And I'm just wetting this graphic until you can just start to see the graphics show through. So this is the difference. See, this one's not wet. This one is. See how you can see the graphics show through? You don't want to make it soaking wet. The thing with these techniques is they don't look mass produced. Everyone looks different and original and unique and they do sell really well. So I have dampen this just so you can start to see the graphic show through. If you put too much water on, you're going to start rubbing that paint off and the graphic's not going to stay on properly. So just put enough on so the paper gets wet. Now the other trick to this is don't use expensive paper. Just use a really cheap computer paper because it's thinner and you won't have as much paper to rub off afterwards. If you're using a really expensive one, of course your paper's thicker, you've got to put more water on it, and it takes longer to rub off. This is just Amazon paper, and uh, it's really thin, and it works great, just the cheapest stuff that you can buy. And I just like using my finger and just going back and forth, and as I'm doing that, you can see that, and if you need to, I, I just dip my finger in a little bit of water, go in that area that's being a little bit stubborn, and just rub it off. So if you're finding that you're rubbing the paint off, then probably you are using too much water. So you can see, I haven't put much water on this at all. I've got one little area right here that uh, had some paper on it. I just lightly dip my finger and then just go over that area. And you can feel when the paper's all gone. So like this corner right here, there's no more paper that's rubbing up. You can see that it's all gone. And then you, as you come over, see how there's still paper there? And you just work in small sections. If you're trying to do a big section all at once, you're probably not gonna have really great results. So you just wanna go small sections, dip your finger after the initial wet, um, after you initially wet all the paper, and then just work. I find this actually kind of therapeutic. I'll just sit here, I'll put a podcast on, or some music, or I'll put another, YouTube video on crafting one and just work away and do this and just take my time. As soon as you start to rush, um, you're gonna have problems and you're gonna rub that 
that off. Okay, so this one, I think I've got it pretty good. Uh, now you can see, see there's a little bit that's still rubbing off on my finger. I'm just going up and down really lightly and you can feel it. Like a lot of people have said, can I use the rag to do the whole thing? I find you can't because you can't feel the paper and whether it's rubbed all off or not. Um, so the last little bit is, is best to do with your fingertips. So that's done. So what I would do next now, because we're on a live, I can't go through and do all the step by step, but what I would do now is I would put some polyacrylic sealer on top of this to seal it all up. Or you could use Mod Podge. I don't like the look of Mod Podge as much as a polyacrylic sealer, but that will seal it all up. It's not going to make it waterproof. You're not going to be able to throw it in the dishwasher, but it will allow uh, you to um, wipe it down with a damp rag if you need to and dust it. So that one's done. I would probably put a little bit of burlap around the tarp, um, twine along the top, and you could put some fresh flowers in here. Perfect gift for somebody that's a tea lover too. So that one's all done. This technique is not gonna be something that you're gonna do the first time and it's gonna be perfect. It's never perfect. It's always kind of that rustic feel. Apply the graphic onto the jar. I've used my Mod Podge matte. That's the one that I like the most. You can use gloss, but you gotta be mindful that you're going to have a glossy finish after you've rubbed all the paper off. I find matte uh, blends in better. Also, this technique works best on white paint background. If you're trying to do a color, um, and you don't have a lot of experience with this technique, you're gonna see the outline of the graphic. It just doesn't blend in very well. So when you're just starting, start on a white background and it'll work the best for you. Plus, if you are using white and making these to sell, they sell better. If you are doing stuff with a lot of color, of course it limits who can buy your products because not everybody has if you've painted it blue, not everybody has blue in their home. But if you're doing a white background, everybody can make that work and fit into their decor. So that's another thing to think about when you're making these projects. This technique will work with an inkjet, but it is a bit more tricky. You can't use as much water. And I find the graphic is a little bit more, um, it's just a little bit more, light than the laser printer. If you're gonna be doing a lot of these, in the last few years, the price of light laser printers has really gone down. Uh, I have one that I share my um, code for. It's a brother laser printer, and I think it's around $199. So if you're doing this as a business, I would myself invest in a laser printer and it'll save you a lot of headaches trying to kind of fiddle and fight with a inkjet printer. And the other thing is if you're finding that you have a noticeable outline, you might be putting your Mod Podge on too thick. Mod Podge is not a really thin product. It, it is a little bit thicker. So if you've put lots on, that's what's transferring that image and you're gonna see all of that light, that outline on your project if you've used too much. So you don't need a whole lot to do the transfer, just a light coat. And if you've been following along here for a while, you've seen lots of videos where I've done these and I've showed you how much Mod Podge I put on. It's not very much. I, again, just working in small areas, I can feel the uh, paper rubbing up underneath. And this one's coming off really well. Okay, we're getting there. Now you can see the paper rolling. I, it, like it's almost dry and I'm still getting paper rolling up on this. And uh, these, these glass jars, if you can save them out of your recycling bin uh, for Halloween and Christmas, they sell like hotcakes. So that could be something you might want to start stockpiling a few of them paint them up, have them ready for the holiday season because if you want to make a little bit of cash, then this is a great way to do it. This is a beautiful graphic too. I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. I love this one. Okay, so this doesn't look too, too bad. I'm not feeling too much. Um, sorry if I'm banging away here. I'm still getting a little bit kind of peeling up, but it looks pretty good. I think I got it now. So I'm just gonna show you, with the white paint, 
you see how you cannot see an outline anywhere here. So that means that I've put just the right amount of Mod Podge on there so it's blending in. If I had had a really thick coat, you would have seen all of that outline around there. So if you're having that, that could be your issue. You're just putting on too much Mod Podge. Again, that one's ready. I'd put some twine or ribbon around the top and you have a nice little vase. I'd spray it with the polyacrylic sealer and you'd have a nice little vase for a gift or to sell or just to make for your home. Okay, so all of my graphics that I'm using, I make myself and they're available in my Etsy store. Uh, I'll put the link down below in the description and you can check them out. It's right full of really great graphics. And the graphics that end up in my Etsy store are the ones that I know are gonna be really good sellers if you're a reseller. So check that out. I'll put uh, the link down below. And if you join my channel here, you'll get a discount code for 50% off all of my graphics. Or if you want to join my Patreon club, um, you get uh, graphics delivered to your inbox every Friday at midnight, whatever graphics that I have listed that week in my Etsy store, you're going to get delivered to you weekly. And you'll also get a 70% off discount code for any previous graphics before you join that you can use and craft with. So check that out. I love my Patreon group. You guys are so fantastic for supporting my channel. And um, I really appreciate it. And you can swing it um, or save up that laser printer is gonna really make your life a lot easier. Um, but if you do, if you only have an inkjet and you are having problems with it transferring, you're right, you can just go back over those letters if you have a good steady hand and use uh, a paint pen and paint over your letters to use it kind of like a stencil and then paint in to fix up your graphics, that would work. Okay, so this is really dried out, so I'm just gonna go back in with my rag and just kind of re-wet it again. And if, sometimes I like to start in the middle and then work my way out, um, and that works really well. Sometimes if you, if you start in a corner and you start pushing down this way, you're gonna pull off that first letter. So if you're starting in the middle, that's gonna ensure that that's gonna help you out. And I think I can kind of claim that I'm an expert at this <laughs> at this point. I have done so many of these. I am a Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method guru <laughs> i can i have done so many of these i can do them in my sleep i can look at a picture i can know what you've done i know what you've done wrong and i can guide you through it actually uh, a really popular graphic and it's a great gift for somebody that's lost a loved one uh, in life we loved you dearly in death we still do in our hearts you hold a place no one else will ever fill i love this one and um it's one of my best sellers too, because somebody can buy it for a gift for a friend or a family member that has lost someone. You can add some nice twine along the top, add a couple fresh, uh, flesh, fresh flowers in the top, and it's beautiful. And I would seal this up with some poly acrylic sealer. Okay, so that one's done. Dampen this until we can start to sh see it show through. And I've just dampened this and we're just gonna start to rub the paper. Yeah, so this has a curve in it. So it's a little bit more difficult. You wanna make sure that you're taking your time and really pressing the bubbles and wrinkles out when you put it on a glass jar or bottle that's curved and, uh, and get it so it doesn't look wonky. But this one didn't go too, too bad. So we're just gonna rub this paper off and originally here. I always go back to my thumb I'm rubbing this off. Now you can see this one's got a bit of a curve because my jar was curved so but I think it's gonna look all right when it's all done. I probably I could have sized this graphic a little bit smaller and fit it in the band of this glass jar but I thought it would look nicer if it was kind of down a bit further so I make it look easy but when you're just learning, it does take a little bit of patience and uh, to, to master this tech. Yeah, so I have a, um, a pricing guide on my Etsy store to price your DIYs. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's kind of a base guideline to price them. Um, and the thing with on Etsy, 
when you're doing these things, I don't actually see a lot of people doing this technique. That's why it kind of makes it so original and so different. So it is hard to know how to price them because you don't see a lot out there to compare them with. So I do have this booklet and it's how to price your DIYs. It's really great for that. And it goes right through to itemize your calculating the cost of your DIY if you're gonna be selling it retail or wholesale. It's a really great resource and um, worthwhile to pick up out of my Etsy store if you're gonna be doing some selling to guide you along to know how to price stuff like my uh, graphics out of my Etsy store. One of the files is already reversed, so you don't need to fiddle with that. You can just download that reverse file right onto your computer, print it out, um, size it, print it out, and use it, and you don't need to fiddle with it. I do have a video on how you can reverse. If you're making your own graphics and you um, aren't sure how to reverse them, I do have a video on how to do that that will guide you along, though, if you want to custom make something for yourself. And I'm almost finished this one. Isn't this pretty? Actually, you know what? This worked out really well. I was kind of worried about putting it on that uh, arched surface on this glass jar, but I kind of like the way that this turned out like this kind of on that angle that looks good and I love this graphic too. Again this is a perfect little gift to give a friend. Um, you can put some ribbon or some twine around the top, fill it up with some fresh flowers and you're good to go. How beautiful is that? And again if you want to distress these a little bit, put a little bit of water on your finger, rub into that paint. This is like a little scuff pad and you can scuff into it and it just kind of gives it that rustic look. Like you can see here how some of that paint kind of wore off there. And, and then you can just rub it a bit. It just kind of gives it. We've got this one. We've got this one. We've got this one. And we've got this one all finished. All of these are out of my recycling bin. We ate the food. I cleaned them, took the labels off, painted them with my homemade chalk paint method, put the graphics on them, and I've created these beautiful DIYs, and these will all sell really well.